Hey, 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 welcome back, everybody. It is Tuesday Night Live. It's great to be back with you guys. Uh, a lot of you guys I didn't get to see this morning, but hopefully we'll see tonight. I hope you all are having a, had a great day, and hopefully we can end this night in a good way. Um, I'm going to do the, uh, open up the phone lines again for the Sebastian Rogers uh, call-in. Uh, that way, people that didn't get a chance to do it can do it this evening. And we got some other stuff to talk about, a couple other cases as well. And uh, I think with all that being said, we should get this show on the road. Here we go. Here we go.
Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me again tonight. I appreciate you very, very much for jumping in here tonight. A lot of people didn't get a chance to um, call in today, um, and some people weren't able to be here today at all uh, when we went over the press conference so on and so forth. So here we are again. <clears throat> now we're going to finish up uh, the call ins uh, and cover a couple other things. Um, I'm going to put the awareness out there for a case uh, Doodlebug brought to me that's pretty sad, actually. Um, so I'm going to put the awareness out for that for sure and um, talk about a few other things and just hang out with you awesome peeps. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. So very much appreciated. And uh, yeah. please, if you will, hit that like button on the way in the door so we can get this in the algorithm. I appreciate you so very much for that. And for being here appreciate that appreciate you appreciate you appreciate that thank y'all so very much come on in and find a seat get comfortable if you will and let's do this thing um let's get this up and going come on in guys if you will All right, all right, all right. Come on in. Come on in. Um, yes, that is my uh, screensaver on my one of my uh, 4K screensavers on my TV screen. It looks pretty real. I like it. It's kind of relaxing just to be able to sit and look at it. I've actually sat. I have a love seat over here to my right. I've actually sat there and fallen asleep looking at that and the fireplace that I had that goes on there too with the crackling sound. It's put me to sleep a few times. So, you know, it's, it's relaxing and enjoyable. I'm sure people get tired of the fireplace thing all the time. So there you go. Try to break it up for you guys. Give you little things here and there, different things. So, all right. All right. Come on in, everybody. Find a place to sit. Oh, yeah, that storm, it's raining here, but the big stuff hasn't hit yet. We're under a tornado watch right now. Well, if I'm sitting here and you see me get picked up and brushed away, you'll know what happened to me. Hopefully not, but you never know. There are sea turtles on there. You just missed one, Molly. There was a huge sea turtle. So speaking of Molly. Let me see who is joining us tonight and gracing us with their amazing presence here. Looks like, uh, of course, Miss Victoria and um, her cute, amazing little dog are joining us. Mr. Kano, uh, Summer Vibes, uh, back in the house. Great to see you. Great to have you here. Miss Carolyn Miller, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Uh, of course, the awesome Doodlebug. Thank you so much for being here, Doodle. Appreciate you very much, Miss Tina B. Welcome back to you. Lord, guys, I got to get some sun. We need to get some sunshine here. Kaylee, welcome. Good to have you back. Good to see you. Samantha Mustard McDowell, thank you for joining us tonight. Great to see you. Great to have you here. Miss Kate Pruitt's in the house. Welcome back. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, Good golly, Miss Molly's in the house. I hope you got some sleep, Molly, dear. Lord knows you needed it. Robin407, welcome back, dear. Good to see you tonight. Uh, Vicki Harrison, welcome back to you. Great to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Ang Avatar, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you tonight. Good to have you here. Let's see the mischief, misfit for Raya in the house. Welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Rissa Roberts, welcome back. Great to have you here. Great to see you. And, of course, the... Nope, uh, we're gonna look at that one. Salty True Crimes in the house. Good to see you tonight, dear. Salty True Crime time. I'm sorry about that. Groot, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Tracy Hinton, welcome back as well. Great to have you here. Nevada, aka Christy, welcome. Good to see you. Good to have you here. B. Williams, welcome back. Good to have you here again. 
Carolyn Ausmiller. All righty then. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good to see you. I haven't seen that name in a while. Miss Jessica, thank you for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure. Cassie in the house. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Uh, SWTC, how are we doing tonight, Steve? Good to see you. Good to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Marina Girl, oh, welcome back to you. Thank you for joining us. Moonlit Babies in the house. Thank you for joining me tonight. Again, appreciate you very much. Summer Jade, thank you for being here. Appreciate you. Party of Five, welcome back to you. Lisa Vallejo, thank you for joining me tonight. Spooky Paw, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Catherine2929 is in the house. Welcome back to you. Grass and Crime, always a pleasure. Lucy's mom, how are you? Good to see you. And how's Lucy doing? Good to see you tonight. Wishful Thinking Pickle Whisper, welcome. Good to see you. Interesting name. <laughs> Of course, Brandy B's in the house. Good to see you, Brandy. Leo, a welcome back to you. Good to see you. Good to have you in the house. Steny Kerp, hello, hello, hello. And hello to a big Ohio Al. If you're in the house too, sir. Thank you for joining us. Uh la la la. Let me see. Ro, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Tracy again. Welcome back. Guys, if you will, on the way in the door, please make sure that you're hitting that like button. It just takes a second. And leave a little DNA for me, if you will, guys. That way we can get this up, out, and into the algorithm. Blah. Algorithm. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Georgia Rain, welcome back. Great to see you. Virginia Wolf, my friend. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you very much. Uh, the Boom. I think it's Boom. Hello from Virginia. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for joining us. And I already see support for Sebastian with all the green hearts. You guys are amazing. Thank you for that. I appreciate that so very much. Woke up in 1984. It's great to see you too. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amber Milby. Hello from Ohio as well. Neighbor, I'm an Ohioan as well. Mama Bear K. Hello, another Ohioan. That's awesome. It's great to see all you guys in here tonight. I don't feel so lonely now. Uh, chick bait, welcome. Great to see you. Great to have you here. We got another mama bear in the house. That's awesome. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Find yourself a space to be. Kaylee, Kaylee, there's two of you in here. Okay. Or Kaylee. Backward slash and Kaylee H E P. I'm confused, but so be it. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, everybody. The door's open to everyone. And welcome to everybody that's new here. I appreciate seeing all the new. I love seeing all the new faces and, and all the new names. Uh, you guys are so welcome. So appreciated. Uh, it's great to have you guys here. We have plenty of room and the door's always open to everyone. So thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, and everyone that is that is normally here, please make sure you're welcoming all the new people with open arms so that they will want to come back as always. Jingles in the house. Welcome back, Jingles. Good to see you. And welcome again, yes, to all the meatballs. It's great to have you all in here. And thank you to all my moderators that are joining us tonight. Once again, as I always say, y'all know that I wouldn't do this without you because I couldn't do this without you. I appreciate you all so very much. Miss Heather Fitzgerald, speaking of, good to see you. Miss Vic's Logic is in the house. Good to see you tonight, dear. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you very much. Um, come on in, guys. We got 119 peeps in here. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And 88 likes. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. Let's make it match if we, we can. Come on. We can do yeah. that. Welcome back, Leslie and Billy. Great to see you tonight. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate that so very much. It looks like Moonlit Baby just gifted five new memberships out. That's awesome, Moonlit. Thank you. Let me see here. It looks like Heather Fitzgerald was gifted a membership. Woke up in 84. Summer Jade. Mama Bear K. Rissa Roberts. I think that's it that's awesome thank you again so much for that that is so very much appreciated 
And Miss Carolyn was gifted another membership. That's awesome as well. Robin 407 was gifted. Congrats to all you new meatballs and welcome to the sauce. It's awesome to having the new having all the new meatballs in here to help us spill a little bit of sauce every night when we come in here and every day. I appreciate you guys so very much for that. And welcome to all of you. Miss Carolyn, thank you so much for that. That's awesome, you guys. Rock and roll. I appreciate that very much. Melissa Iorio, welcome to you. Good to see you tonight. Welcome, Sunshine. Great to see you as well. And guys, make sure down there at the bottom of your your chat uh, your chat bar down there, there's a little dollar sign. And make sure you click on that. Go in and make sure that you are able to receive gifts. Because if you never know when you're going to get uh, gifted a membership, it happens in here. Because there's some very generous people that come into this community. Because this community is so amazing. So it happens all the time. I saw that. We're going to talk about that tonight, Marina Girl. It's kind of interesting, wasn't it? Very interesting. I wonder why. That's kind of strange considering what's going on. Welcome back, Amy Fisher. Good to see you tonight. I thought Cluminati was in here, but I guess she's not now. Of course, you can mention any creator in here. I have no qualms with that. And here comes the thunder and lightning. You guys can use caps in here, too. I don't have any issues with all that stuff, guys. It doesn't bug me. Um, Virginia said he's been a member for seven months today. That is super awesome. Congrats, Virginia. And thank you for being a part of this community. That is so very appreciated. <laughs> it's okay, chick mate. No worries. No worries at all. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on one second, folks. Sorry about that, guys. I had some windows open and just shut because it's a raining. Up by Cleveland. I'm south of Cleveland, chick bait. That's awesome. I call in Dr. Dale. So let me pull it. <laughs> and whatever you guys need to do, it is absolutely fine. You don't have to be polite with me. Just po be polite with each other. That's all I ask of all you guys. Respect each other. That's the only rule I have in here. Actually, I have two. Please, with any of the cases that we cover, obviously, um, no victim shaming. And um, just respect each other's opinions and each other, period. That's the only two rules I have. Sorry. <clears throat> yes, I hope not, Virginia. But we're in that range. We have a tornado watch out on us right now. I'm hoping it doesn't turn into a warning. I will be checking from time to time. Jackie Bushable, welcome. Good to see you. We got 105 likes. We are in the algorithm. You guys are amazing tonight. I appreciate that so very much. For sure. So like I said, I'm going to be opening up the phone lines and or the panel for discussion. About this and some other things we're going to talk about. I'm paying attention, Miss Cassie. Don't worry. It's a rumbling through. I can't, it sounds like a train right now, but I know the difference. I promise. 
Absolutely, chick bait. We're not probably too far away from each other. Like I said, I'm about um, about 40, 45 miles south of, of Cleveland. Welcome, Robert Bell. Yeah, we should be able to hear it. Uh, Carito MVP, welcome to you. Good to see you. Yeah, yes, Carito. She was, in my opinion, she was talking about JLR and also, um, I think she was talking about the Cajun Navy as well. We were under a watch, and as long as it's a watch, I'm okay. Uh, tornado warnings is where it gets rough out here. And the town that I live outside of has been hit and in, in almost leveled uh, a long time ago. So one of the towns that's around this area, it's pretty bad back in the 80s. So, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we got to, I got to, wow. Welcome, Vicki Harrison. How many people in here are from Ohio? If you could, real quick, throw one in the chat for me. That includes me. I'm throwing my one in there too, because that's this is crazy. I ain't never seen this many Ohioans in here in my life. <clears throat> Crocker Park, I have heard of that. Amber Milby, welcome to you. So we got one, two, Tweety Girl, good to see you. LN, oh my God. Good Lord. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So far, ten. Illinois near Chicago. Cincinnati's in the house. Heather Fitzgerald, you're your eleven or twelve. Um, Chick bait is near Crocker Park, Heather. Mm, absolutely, Chick bait. Oh, I was trying to take over, it looks like. That's all good with me. Hometown love. Gotta love it. Nothing. Nothing wrong. Well, you're up near Brandy then, Toledo. 444-145. Keep getting booted out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Woke up. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, just to give a heads up, there was, um, I saw something, um, that was put out earlier, uh, it was sent to me that they were stating that, um, the police had spoken to, um, Chris and Katie Proudfoot. They wanted to re-interview them last week and come to find out that they've moved moved to memphis which i think is kind of interesting like while this is going on you just up and move that's that's a little off to me i'm just you know i'm not i'm not trying to say something but like that's just that's strange to me um <clears throat> miss brandy's down or mystic virgo welcome back good to see you tonight we got 144 people. We're in the algorithm, and we are rolling. Teresa Morton, welcome. Good to see you tonight. And it looks like Ohio is in the house for sure tonight. Um, That's awesome, guys. Hometown love. You can't go wrong there. Catherine Holubowick, New Jersey's in the house. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate you guys. Indiana, Jersey lady, good to see you. Welcome to all of you guys that are just now jumping in. Appreciate you very much. Chad Button, of course, coming out of Iowa. Appreciate that. It is beyond bizarre. A lot of Ohioans here, guys. There's none wrong with that. These two get stranger and stranger. They do. They do. They do. I mean, I... I... I don't understand. Like, I'm sorry, but 
if this is a fact, if it's true and they moved to Memphis, I know like if he's got a job, I get that. But why are you moving? You got a six hundred and some odd thousand dollar home and you're just up and moving when your child's missing. That's strange to me. You know, I'm not trying to read too deep into this, guys, but it is definitely weird. Inside Mississippi state line, no extradition from what I'm hearing. Really? Seriously? Wow. Okay, so. The more I see in here, the more I, I just, I just don't even know what to say, you guys. Algorithm going crazy. That's all good with me. Welcome, Gene Anderson. Thank you for joining me tonight. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all you guys. Thank you for being here. That is definitely an odd situation, guys. I saw that earlier, and I was just like, um, you know, because there's a lot of things that fly around here. Welcome, uh, Kathy Gesslin from Minnesota. Good to have you here. Um, it, it's it's strange, Vicky. I'm just saying. Because of people getting on their property, they cop at. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know. Welcome, Canadian cat lady. Great to see you tonight, dear. It's not confirmed. That's, that's a, his parents own their house. Oh, well then. Angela, welcome. I was told it was Memphis, but from the, the clip that I got, let me let me go look at something here. Let's look this. We got to research some things, guys, before we make, you know, hardcore judgment on stuff. Uh, it looks like Kentucky declared a state of emergency. Damn, they got hit hard, too. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. We watched the press conference today. Hold on here, guys. Mama Bear K, thank you for... I was in clues chat and someone looked to see who owned the house and it didn't say KP or. Wow, it's interesting. Hmm. Well, one thing I wanted to show you is I don't know if you guys have ever followed. It's a it's a show that i well not really a show but it's a stream that i follow from time to time and it's called profiling with pat brown there are some interesting things and interesting points that she makes um and i wanted to let you guys see what her thoughts were of the press conference excuse me um and then get rolling from there and as i said i'm going to open up the phone lines tonight to everybody uh, to call in and have us talk about it and including the um the panel too uh to express our feelings on this or your feelings i should say um so on and so forth so um i was it was kind of interesting for those of you that may not have seen this some of you might have and if you have i'm sorry uh, but i wanted to review this and talk about some of the things that she's brought up um first off first and foremost and then move forward with that but thank you guys for joining me for this um one moment here okay well
All right. So first off, um, here's the home. Uh, 1008 Stafford Court, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37075. Owner, Katie Proudfoot, Christopher Proudfoot. Purchase date, September of 2022. Purchase price was 641000 Um, And that is them, for sure. Christopher Proudfoot is the the number one person on there. So that's interesting. Well, we have that straight out of the gate. That's interesting to know. But still... It's st- if they move though, that's still crazy to me. Um, we got to check that out and find out what's what though with that. You know what I mean? So let's see here. That's a good point, Jake Bait. That's my new puppy, by the way, folks. Um, good evening, Mr. SRB. Thank you for joining us again tonight. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that, Mama Bear, but that's the uh, those are the ownership papers. So, yeah, that's a hell of a price on that, isn't it? Let's see what we got going on here first, and we'll move into a couple other things, guys. And if anybody wants to to talk about anything just in particular, I think Pat Brown's awesome too. I like her a lot. I will have time because I'm gonna, like I said, it's gonna we're gonna have an open panel, open discussion on this, and I'm opening the phone lines for all of you guys. So thank you, Virginia. I appreciate that. Uh, here we go, guys. Let me know how the audio is on this. Profiler Pat Brown and. Uh, There was just a press conference on the Sebastian Rogers case. Sebastian's been missing for quite a while now. And people are very frustrated, certainly his family is frustrated, but there are people out um, that I've been in connection with on the internet who are just wondering what happened to Sebastian. Hey, Brooke, you keep jumping uh, in here tonight. This press conference was done today and didn't give a lot of information, but it did give enough information that I wanted to talk about it. Uh, because people have a lot of questions, and I want to give those uh, give some answers to that. Um, and I actually made this a public uh, public um, video today, and I almost never do that. But if you do have questions, please do uh, come into the chat room and, and ask those questions, because I don't do this very often. Yeah, but there's so many people wondering, what does this press conference mean? And what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and give you my thoughts on it and answer your questions. So welcome everybody. Um, Now, I have done a number of videos on Sebastian Rogers. I'm going to link them uh, in in the description box. And uh, I've done them on mostly the step parents, uh, the mother of Sebastian and also his stepfather. Uh, So they have not done well shall we say, in the social media. They've done a number of interviews, including Nancy Grace, and didn't go well for them. Uh, people didn't particularly like them. They didn't trust them. They found them, they, they really think they might have something to do with what happened to Sebastian. So I'll, I'll link my videos on that. I'm also going to link a video that was done on, uh, it was analysis of, uh, a statement analysis of Seth Rogers, who was the boss. Uh, too many, Brookie. There's way too many missing children. And that's pretty much what I've been covering a lot of these days because of that. So thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate the support so very much. Um, there was, just for everybody's understanding, there was a pair of glasses found over the past few days, they said, but they did not say as of yet that they belong to um, uh Sebastian they're still investigating that to see if they belong to Sebastian so we got to go easy on that until we fir- uh figured it out for sure who it is absolutely brookie um and you're always welcome here i appreciate that so very much so we got to wait to make sure once they do the full investigation on the glasses 
before we can call it what it is. And if they are, that's going to be interesting to me and sad at the same time because that child needs those glasses, as we know. So, um, Maisie, welcome to you. Uh, Sunshine, good to see you. All right, guys, let's move it on. Let's move it on. By the lo biological father of of uh, Sebastian, and is done by Deception Detective, who I have a lot of respect for. He's new He's new on the, uh, YouTube, and I've liked what he's done so far. So I'm going to link that. I agree with him entirely uh, in what he says about Seth Rogers, his uh, father. Why? Because Seth Rogers, every interview I've ever seen him do, I've never seen any deception. He's a heartbroken father who's looking for his son. And I like the way the Deception Detective goes through his interview and clarifies a lot of what is going on with, uh, you know, Seth Rogers in the search for his son. Um, now, so we have Seth Rogers, who I'm going to pretty much say all the experts that I know, <laughs> including myself, have eliminated him as having anything to do with the disappearance of his son, uh, Sebastian. However, the step parents, their behaviors their interviews are deceptive and concerning. And yet we see uh, in this um, press conference today, the question was asked, is there any foul play? Actually, I think the question was asked like three times and three times over. Welcome back, Clue. Good to have you here, dear. I may have you jump up here later. Uh, it was stated that they have no evidence of foul play and that all all the pa the parents involved uh, the, fa the father the stepfather and the mother have all been cooperative i and agree that's what they said. um no evidence of foul play so what most people are getting out of this is that what the police are saying and that they seem to be stressing, and I'll say this, they seem to be stressing that Sebastian did indeed leave of his own accord out of his home in the middle of the, whatever, early morning hours, um, barefoot and vanished. A child who is, is on the autism, autism spectrum um, and has no money to speak of, didn't take a phone, where did he go? He wasn't on social media. So who, who, who would he have contacted to meet up with? None of this makes sense. Uh, there were some, uh, there were some lights in the backyard, which the police and has pretty much they've down. They said that has nothing to do with Welcome, it. Nana. So those, those lights in the backyard was pushed on social media. One of those gossipy things that doesn't, didn't mean anything. So there was, there's zero um, footage of him leaving his home or being any place else. You just vanished. Which is hard hard to understand because he is a child who seemingly had some things going for him in the home that were good. He loved his puppies, for example. Uh, Mom keeps saying he loved his puppies. Um, where would he go? His, he was supposedly going to be moving in with his biological father, Seth Rogers, at a certain point. So if he was unhappy in the home that he was in, he would have a future going over to his biological father's house. So where the heck would he go? Barefooted, in the, for what reason? So it's a very con confusing case, shall we say. But today, what the was in the press conference was that... Welcome, Joe. Well, they're saying they have no evidence of foul play and keep looking for Seth. That was basically what they said. So what, is, what does all of this actually mean? Um, um, I'm going to answer a question here because I see it coming in. She, uh, Shelly, I don't know how to pronounce your name. How do we know he returns home after dinner that night? All right. Let, let me go hey, Shelly and Ray, the welcome. issue of one of the things they're not telling us very clearly is the last time he was seen. Now, supposedly according to the mother she had gone out with with uh sebastian oh, gray. uh and they'd gone to bj's and then they'd gone bowling and then they went out to dinner with relatives and then they returned home that's that's what i have heard 
Thank you. Now, George. what does that mean? Well, if that's true, the last time he was seen by human beings would be at dinner time at a restaurant. I don't see any confirmation of that, but you know, one of the things we have a problem with being outside of, of a police investigation is we don't know what they know. I'm sure. <laughs> I want to point this out as a profiler. I, 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 I have this problem myself as a profiler. I, in this case, I'm not on the inside of this investigation. I do not know what the police know. Oftentimes when I've worked on cases and I've been brought into an investigation, before I go in, I'm like, oh, oh I think this is what could have happened. And the family's telling me this and so on and so forth. And then I get in there. I'm sitting in the room all the, with all the evidence. I'm looking at crime scene photos. I'm looking at, I'm looking at autopsy hey, photos. I'm hey. looking at interviews. I'm like, oh, well, now I know what happened. And it has nothing to do with what I thought outside the investigation. So understand this about the police investigation. It's their investigation. One of the things I, I do object to on, on, on the internet and, and social media is, look, I do an educational channel to help you understand things. But I never tell you to go out into the real world and start investigating. I, you know, we don't know what they know. Don't go out there and start accusing people. Don't go out there and start giving tips based on stuff that you heard on social media. It's driving the police nuts. They're like, stop it. Because you're going on gossip and you're going on theory, which is theory is fine if you just want to understand things. But it do not go forward and into the real world and get involved with a police investigation. It's not your place. The police are doing their investigation. I'm not involved, you're not involved. They're the ones doing the investigation. They know way more than we do. Now, I don't know, I'm sure they have interviewed, I would think, the relatives of Sebastian, who supposedly had dinner with him, to know what time dinner ended, at what time he left the hey, restaurant. Yo, baby. There's another interesting issue tonight. about he supposedly put out the trash. I have heard that there a neighbor or somebody saw him putting out the trash. If that is true, then he arrived home. But I have no clue whether there is evidence of that or not. So the last, I don't even Hi, know. Martin. I don't know when he was at the restaurant. I don't know when he left. I don't know if there's proof he arrived home. So your question is reasonable. Did he arrive home? I do not know. Uh, the police would have investigated this, and if they had evidence he arrived home, then they have a better understanding of the time frame, and that nothing could have happened to him on the way home. Because if that is true, when we look at the mother of Sebastian, could she have done something to him on the way home? Theoretically, as long as he didn't, if there's no proof he arrived home. Now, if there's proof he it arrived home, that didn't happen. So, okay, so we do not know outside of the investigation whether he arrived home or he didn't. They're not telling us. They do know. They know what, well, they know as much as they've been able to interview and look at videos and all of this kind of thing, ring cameras and all that. Did he or did he not arrive home? All right. If he arrived home, then we have him in the home with his mother. <clears throat> And you guys, this is one of the biggest questions I think a lot of people have uh, questions about. I think, I know I do. I do. I personally have questions about it from the beginning. And I know there's a few people in here at the very least that were questioning if or not he and, and or his mother came home at a specific time, if he was in the car with her when she came home and so on and so forth. And if she had been any other places before that, um, you know, if that was on camera somewhere, that was something that a lot of people were asking. Uh, welcome Sergeant King. Good to see you tonight. Everybody else that's jumped in here. It's wonderful to see you all in here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Miss Zelda. Thank you for joining us. I know you worked hard today and you're still in here. I appreciate that. And that, and thank you to anybody that has donated to these links to support the channel. God bless you all for that. I appreciate that very much. Mostly, though, thank you for being here to support this, guys. Just being here, period, is, is, is what I want the most. I appreciate that very much, guys. So thank you for that. Um, uh, let's see. It is, yo, baby. It's, it's, it, this one's hit me hard and pulled on my heartstrings more than you know, because a lot of you guys know, a lot of you don't. I have a child that's in the spectrum, a 17-year-old child that presents a lot of the same 
issues and and situational uh actions that sebastian does as well <clears throat> so this hit me real real hard when this first you know dropped and i've been stuck on this hardcore because i want this child to come home happy and safe and sound um i really do so it, it's a big deal um Oh, absolutely, yo, baby. And I just, I appreciate the support from you guys more than anything for this and supporting the fact that, um, that you guys want to bring him home as well. And you're putting the, the word out and may in the awareness and just pushing this guy so very much. I appreciate that more than, you know, um, thank you, Josie. I appreciate you being here. Uh, Salty says, yep. I learned many of the questions because of Pat. I've been listening to her since the early 90s. She's awesome. I do I do like her a lot, too, Salty. I just found her a couple weeks ago and very, very much like how she 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 takes things on. She's very no no BS. You know what I mean? And I like that. So <clears throat> um, Teresa S. Karen Boardman. Good to see all of you guys tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you um, very much. She's the profiler. Um, but so far, you know, I can't say that, you know, I don't, I disagree with a lot of what she's saying. So, and, and may, some people will, that's okay. We're allowed to do that guys. <laughs> so it's no big deal. Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. Katie, Katie Proudfoot. She's at home with him. All right. So, um, then, then it becomes an issue of if she was alone with him, only Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian. Yeah, I can. Then do. one of two sure. things happened. Sebastian left. Uh, for those of you that weren't familiar, again, her name is Pat Brown. Uh, it's called Profiling with um, Pat Brown. Oh, okay. Thank you, Zelda. Zelda covered it already. So there's the link, guys. Um, please check her out, if you will. You will not be disappointed. She's done quite a few uh, cases, and she's pretty good, you guys. Seriously, she is. Absolutely, yo, baby, no problem. Um, <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely, no problem. Welcome, Pamela. Good to have you here tonight. Thank you for joining us. On his own in the morning, as Katie claims, she comes in in the morning, and she says, oh, my God, where did he go? He's not in his bed, and she looks around. She can't find him. He disappeared in the night of his own volition. And that's what the police are indicating happened. They're saying there's no evidence of foul play. That, and so they're still looking for him out there. The other option is something happened at the home with Katie Proudfoot, that she did something to him, and, and then somehow she managed to spirit his body out of the house. Okay, <laughs> this gets a little complicated. Um, now there are some who would say, and I say this myself, <laughs> um, where was Chris Proudfoot? Chris Proudfoot is probably, <laughs> shall we say the, the least liked person in this trio of parents. Always Chris glad to be here. Across well. His ex-wife just did a video. Oh my goodness. And everything she's in the video, I'm going to say she left a few things out, but it was Pretty, I, I believe most of what she said. Chris Proudfoot has been through a bunch of wives. He appears to be, appears to be a rather controlling human being. Um, Good question, Sergeant King. <laughs> what, I'm still looking for the words I want to say here. It doesn't come across as somebody I would want to marry my daughter. Uh, he's not a likable human being. He seems to be a person with a possible personality disorder. And I'm not going to go further than that because I will get sued. But he appears to have a personality disorder. Um, so he's not, he comes across terribly in every interview he does, and he should stop doing them. Um, does that mean he had anything to do with, uh, with, with uh, Sebastian going missing? No. And I'll give you two reasons why. One is, according to... Chris Proudfoot and his wife. He had not returned home since the, the early, the very early days of February. 
Now, mind you, he's supposed to come out from home every two weeks and hang out with his family, but I don't think that's true. Um, I think he avoids coming home and hanging out with his stepson as much as possible. Um, he, he, he works out of Memphis. His family lives in Nash, out of outside of Nashville. Like, it's a long way. He's always away from home. I've had people attack me and say, oh, you know, some people, you know, he's a, he's, I think it was the crane operator or something. Um, you know, it's like, hey, maybe that that's what people have to do in the business. They have to find work where they can. Hey, Nashville's not a small town. You can't find work there. His family is there. His wife is there. His stepson is there. He's supposed to be helping. He's supposed to be a family man. But he spends the majority of his time in another city three and a half hours away. I'm saying he likes doing that. <laughs> He's perfectly happy being far, far away <laughs> and not being involved with his uh, stepson or his wife necessarily. Uh, which is why he's had so many. Um, he chooses not to be near home. And that doesn't make him a killer. It doesn't mean do anything to Sebastian. It just means maybe he's that kind of guy that he's that kind of guy. So when you look at interviews, when I say I see deception in interviews, which I have seen with both of them, I think a lot may have to do with just their personality issues and their psychological issues. I can't say that they did something to him, but they don't come across well. Um, so question comes down because he's supposedly been away for an entire month. And uh, he bubbles his way through his Nancy Grace interview. And that's listed below too in the description. He bubbles his way through trying to explain, oh yeah, I came home. No, he didn't come home. Okay, that was, that. Oh, okay, that was not in February. That's in January. Um, <laughs> he doesn't do well with it. Um, and he wouldn't have come home that weekend that he went missing if he had been told to come home. So he really wasn't planning to come home that month at all. So this two weekends a month, I don't even buy it. Um, how much time he ever spent with Sebastian is, limit, is questionable. Now, let me say this. Stepchildren are difficult. If you're Even if you're the most wonderful person in the world, anybody knows who, who's married and they have stepchildren, things, it's very difficult situation. Stepchildren are difficult because they haven't. He has another parent. He has a he has a biological dad, and he's connected more to him than he's going to be to Chris Crawford. It's, it's not a good situation. It makes it very difficult to handle this child, and he's autistic on top of it. At some at some point, on the spectrum, so hey, I can't I can't fault Chris Crawford for saying, "Man, I'd rather be in Memphis. This is just too much work." I can't say I blame him for that. Uh, so being who he is, I'm not fond of him. <laughs> I wouldn't want to marry my daughter. I think he exhibits some issues of personality disorder on a spec <laughs> on a spectrum to the very end. But, uh, that doesn't mean he had anything to do with what happened to Sebastian, his disappearance. However, what makes people question is that he claims he was not there. Katie Proudfoot claims she was not there. The police have not said ever that they have per absolutely proven that Chris Proudfoot was not in the home on the evening before he disappeared. They've never said that. Now, Chris Proudfoot has said, we've been cleared. No, they have not. Proud, the Proudfoots have not been cleared. Not at all. They've been vetted. Uh, everybody's been vetted. Nobody's uh, been cleared. All, you know, the police will look at everybody's information, their phones, their locales. They're going to do all that investigation. But the police have never come forward and said anybody has been cleared. And Chris Proudfoot is the easiest person to clear because he wasn't, he shouldn't have even been I'm anywhere not. near the home. He was way down there in Memphis, right? Way far away. So, hey, isn't he the easiest one to vet? and say, we have absolute proof that guy was nowhere near the home. The police have not said that, which means people question. Maybe the police have found that they can't prove that he didn't come home at some point and then leave again. What vehicle was he driving? Was he really in Memphis, blah, 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 blah. We don't know. Um, police haven't said anything. That doesn't mean the police are haven't, they could have ruled them out, but we don't know. But they're not saying that. They could say that, but they're not saying that. Um, so that leaves it as it stands. No one has been eliminated 
from the possibility of having something to do with Sebastian's disappearance, including Sebastian himself. So in the press conference today, they cleared nothing up. <laughs> they did put, they did say over and over, we don't have any evidence of foul play. Right, Salty. Right. Evidence is something that you need to go to court. Doesn't mean you don't have suspicions of foul play. It just means you have no evidence yet. What you gonna do? You don't have evidence. So very good point. Right. Too. I don't know where they're at in this investigation. Um, I don't. Um there, nobody's been cleared. They don't have any evidence of foul play, but they, they're not saying there isn't foul play. They just don't have evidence of it. Um, they keep asking people to look for him, which they should do. And they keep asking for tips. They're basically leaving us with a mystery, as it's always been, uh, because we, we end up in this position where we cannot come up with a good reason why Sebastian would run out of the house in the middle of the, in the early morning hours, barefoot, with nothing with him vanish because he doesn't have the wherewithal to probably hide really well or take off and i don't know he's at his age is he is he really gonna like start a new life and <laughs> another oh uh, he you know he he decided he was gonna go off to some other city and become whatever it just doesn't match him so the so people question, did something go wrong in the home where he was so upset that he was willing to run out in the middle of the night and then unfortunately perished and we just haven't found his body? That's one possibility. Uh, the other possibility is supposedly he met somebody, but no one has any clue who he could have met. Uh, three, could he have run out of the home and somebody grabbed him and then he's, you know, so they did something to him, a sexual predator. Um, he wasn't on the internet, so he's not being groomed by anybody. Could he have then be, or could it be lucky enough that, well, in a sort of way, that a sexual predator got hold of him, has been holding him hostage, and and Seth Rogers, his dad, and 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 Katie, and even Chris have hoped that he's alive, and in spite of the what he might have experienced. Um, you're right about that, yo, baby. I agree. Here's the thing with a case like this, though, the glasses would be easy to check. You take them to you know, the eye doctor that, that Sebastian went to, have him check him out. Here's the problem with this, though. Now, on top of that, you have to verify where they were found. Who they were found by, you have to vet the person that found them and ensure that they're not linked in some other way to something else because understand that people, I mean, we've seen it in other cases, people can do other things, okay? So the police have to make sure that none of this stuff is is linked together it is here too now clue it's it sounds like there's a train going by my house the, the thunder is so rough um be safe clue <clears throat> but um so all of that stuff has to be cleared you know what i'm saying they have to clear anybody that touched them where'd they come from who watched this happen where were they who are you and and how are do you know these person do you know that per i mean they have to do all of that stuff so just saying, it, it it can take a little bit of time, but for the most part, I'm sure that they're they're going to be quick with this to ensure whether or not they're hit, you know, because that's going to be an important piece of information for this case, honestly. Uh, thank you, SRB. Uh, anybody that would like to become a member that struggles because they have an iPhone and it doesn't work, that is the link to use to do that. Um, thank you for that again. <laughs> Prove no monkey business going on. Right. Gotcha. All right. Moving on. Experience. Maybe he'll be freed at some point. Oops. Sorry. Hold on. Correct that prescription. Bees. Oh, yeah. I agree. A hundred percent. It shouldn't take anything to check the prescription and the glasses. They can tell where they came from, what the prescription is, and match it that way. That should be quick. That'll probably be the easiest. That'll probably be the easiest part of the investigation as far as the glasses go, in my opinion. Is that possible? Yeah. It's been a long time. The chances of him being alive are very, very slim. The question is, what happened to him? And the police are really not giving us much information. They're not. They're, they're saying, hey, don't, don't, don't make assumptions. Please still give tips. But hey, don't, don't listen to some people on YouTube and give tips that are all nonsensical because we're wasting our time, which is true. So, you know, don't go there. If you don't absolutely know something, don't waste the police time. So. 
that's where we are. And it's not a very, you know, it's not further on than what we knew before. And I will say one more thing before I go to all of your, your comments here. Um, I want to be straightforward. Um, Seth Ro Sebastian Rogers is not our child. It's a child of his, his, his mother and his father. They're the ones who have lost someone dear to them. And when we go out and we're so, and I'm not obsessed with this. I'm a criminal profiler. I find cases interesting and it's an educational channel that I have. So what I'm trying to do is teach people. Thank you. People get very obsessed. Oh, the sweet child, the sweet child. Oh my God. What happened? It's not your kid. It's not your kid. I'm just going to say this. I, 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 it's nice that you have, have, have empathy. That's cool. But don't forget. There are people near you, your own children, your own grandchildren. There are there are poor children in your neighborhood. There's 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 people you can help right nearby. So sometimes when you're on the internet, you get a little obsessed about things. About you you develop an entire drama in your own head about a child you don't even know, and it's a little sometimes that's what interferes with the police investigation when people get too obsessed, too emotionally involved, and then think they should go out and try to do something that they have no ability to do, especially they don't even live in Tennessee. You know, live in Oregon, <laughs> you live in Arizona. The kid's not there. You can't help. If you know, if you know the, the Proudfoots, if you know the Rogers, if you live nearby in Tennessee and you have some ability to help in the investigation because you have actual tips, please forward them to the police. But otherwise, please stand back, understand things, have some empathy, fine, learn things, but don't go out and right, salty, exactly. interfere with police investigations. All right, I'm going to go to your comments. All right. <sighs> now, let's see. Um, like I say, I don't usually do this. I don't usually have um, open to the public uh, shows ever. Uh, so this is new to me. Um, um, now, here. Now, I, just, I want to point out silly things. Okay. And no one thing I'm never going to do. Move to Tennessee with children. Seriously? <laughs> This is the kind of, I'm sorry, I am, but that's nonsense. Tennessee is a lovely state. People have children there that they raise and care for. The police are not exactly doing a bad investigation. There's a lot of problems. The same thing we saw happening with Riley Strain. Oh, my God, the police don't care. The police are corrupt. No, Riley Strain went out, drank an excessive amount of alcohol, something went wrong, and he fell in the river. Um, I have... Uh, I've, I've uh, analyzed that crime. Uh, a good portion of college students, especially males, drink too much and end up in the river uh, in, in some kind of water. And uh, it's really sad, but that's what happens when you drink too much. Um, the police do their best investigation and, and generally speaking, comes up as an accidental death. And then people say, oh, my God, you're refusing to investigate. You're corrupt. It's nonsense. Do you think that the police in Tennessee don't care about Sebastian? Do you know how much they have worked? They have worked their little buns off. They have worked around the clock. My own daughter was a homicide detective. Um, believe me, she she hardly got home. She worked so many cases. She was so exhausted and she cared. These people care. So stop maligning the police department. That's 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 just that's 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 sick. That's sick. Stop doing that. There are cases of corruption. I'm not I'm not denying I have spoken up against certain issues of corruption. But in the case of a missing child, it's not happening. And there's nothing wrong with Tennessee. A lovely place to live. Some beautiful places live oh, in Tennessee. Karen and children thank can you. disappear in every single here. state, and they do. So I don't know where you're moving with your children, but good luck. Um, <laughs> Tabby says, we had two college guys drink and fall into rivers here in Pittsburgh. It does. It's very sad. We have a problem with um, you know, when you live near rivers, you know, it's really, if you listen, guys, um, evidence, like, like, like Salty said, with evidence and stuff, she's very good with that stuff. She's not always going to be right. Okay. And we don't have to agree with her, whether she is or she's not. Everybody has different opinions about things. I don't agree with her about Riley. Uh, I think there's more to that than that because of the way the pants and the boots and all that kind of stuff. I agree, you know, but the way she presents things, I do respect that and appreciate her thoughts and her feelings on things. And I like to listen to it. So that's why I'm presenting it to see different sides of different things. That's all, guys. So 
Uh, I appreciate everybody's opinions on this, too. I really do. That's why I'm going to have the phone lines open to talk about it, so on and so forth. So uh, it's interesting to have this perspective and then other perspectives as well. So um, that's all. You're going to send your kid to college. <laughs> Make sure they go to college in the desert because all the, you know, they could go out and die dehydration then. But uh, kid. Especially young men who live near rivers and and drown. It's it's they drink too much and they fall in. Sometimes they're urinating. Sometimes whatever they. It's horribly sad. I have two sons, and one daughter. And uh, all I can do is I'm like, thank God they're middle aged now. That's all I can say. Um, uh, let me let me try to look at some of your comments here. Then, um, I'm so un, I'm so not used to doing public stuff. Uh, usually it's uh, I have patron only. Um, as soon as we're done with this um, chick bait, I'm going to open up the phone lines and I'll run the number across the bottom of the screen and call it out. And you guys are welcome to call in at any time. As soon as I open them up. Uh, lives. So I'll, I'll link that below in the, uh, the description. I do eight lives a month. I do four a month on cases, on specific cases. I just did uh, Todd Willingham. I just did um, uh, Madison Scott, who went missing in, in Canada and British Columbia. And I, these are my cases I do on the weekends uh, for the most part, and they're, li they're live for patrons only. Why? Because that means it's a much more controllable situation and I don't get a lot of stuff coming in from every everywhere and bots and haters and all that. So I join my Patreon. If you wanna come to those, it's five bucks a month. Yeah, that'll be the number to call in. Um when i open it up and that'll be at 234-703-4047 and that's the number you guys can get me at absolutely and then i do five uh four um four hangouts a week which i just anything you want me to talk about a, a case in the news something very old that i agree on that show that's interesting too. I do a two-hour show every week on Hangouts. Thank you, yo, baby. I appreciate that. But after I finish all my shows, every one of my shows goes public because it's an. It says thank you for covering this, Dago. Too many missing children, and that is a fact. Way too many. Um, I mean, it, just in Cleveland alone, guys. Um, I think I did some numbers uh, last month for you guys. It's insane, just around me alone. But that's just one state. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's, it's got to slow down. It's got to stop. But uh, I'm going to be covering, um, running a sh uh, show, as I told you, here pretty soon uh, in regards to um, child trafficking. It's going to be a big deal, guys. So um, just just hang loose and stay tuned. And you guys aren't going to want to miss this because this is a, uh, it's a very interesting scenario that we're going to be talking about. And it's a whole story behind it. So, so we will definitely be hopefully getting the awareness out with that story as we run it so an educational channel i'm not here to you know i want people to see what i have to say and learn so everything does become public Thank i you. almost <laughs> never do a public uh public live and this is, is really rare but when this this came up i just knew this was going to go and there was going to be so much insanity i just wanted to clarify things and be willing to talk to the public so that's what i'm doing and um <laughs> Uh, some of you are talking about decept, uh, uh, de um, the uh, deception detective, and I say I, I really like what he's doing. I recommend two people in statement analysis. Peter Hyatt was fabulous. I've known him for many, many years, and he was willing to stick his neck out um, because I, 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 I met with uh, Gonzalo Amaral way back in the Madeleine McCann days. Uh, Gonzalo Amaral and I were going to do a book together, and nobody in the U.S. would publishers would touch it because of the libel issues because uh, my book was pulled off the market Gonzalo Amaral's book was pulled off the market so we never got to do our book together but Gonzalo has gone on to when he got his book back he's gone on to do another book a bravo Gonzalo um uh, but Peter Hyatt was one of because of Madeline Thank you case, so much, one of these things if you spoke up uh, and didn't think she was abducted you didn't show up on any any news channels and you got assaulted <laughs> assaulted by the internet. Um, Peter Hyatt was one of the few professionals outside of myself and Gonzalo who were willing to speak up. It was like, whoa, Wendy, Wendy Murphy was another one. And 
Um, I've had a few other people and uh, so, you know, but very few. And so I was like, I was so shocked when Peter Hyatt did that. And um, so Peter Hyatt has a very good uh, statement analysis um, and um, Deception Detective is new on the block and but I've liked what he's done. So, you know, um, anybody who can educate, I appreciate, I do. So bully for him, so that's great. <laughs> Peter Hyatt, Detective De Deceptive Effect, Pat Brown, the big three. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> if, if I were only so clever, we would have a channel together, the big three. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have to say. Um, a hobby homestead says deception. What? Defective. What the heck? Did Pat does an amazing job. I'm going to disagree. Your analysis is as interesting as it is important getting Sebastian's face into the algorithm. Please reconsider. Okay. I will say this. People have often said, thank you, Pat, for, for putting Sebastian's face out there. This is not this is not what my channel is about. I, 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 you know, you think that's what it's about, but it's absolutely not about that. I do not do news. I do not do uh, let's solve crimes. This is not what my channel is about. I don't put Sebastian's face out there so people can find him. I don't. Why? Because this is an educational channel. It's crime scene analysis, criminal profiling, and understanding logic and how things work. That he happens to be out here is 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 okay. That's true. Um, usually in the early afternoons and then early evenings, um, chick bait. Uh, sometimes only once a day, sometimes twice a day. It just depends. Um, but I'm about to, this is about to be over and I'm about to open up the phone lines for, for call-ins. But um, uh, if you're taking off, thank you so much for joining us. I, I'd love to see you come back in, but uh, I'll be here for a little while. Uh, so very uh, appreciative though. Thank you. True, but I'm not actually putting his face out there for the purposes of spreading his, his face in public. So don't give me credit where credit does not do. <laughs> it's just, that's not what I do this for. Um, <laughs> hi there. Hey, hey, from the UK, accidentally live. No, I'm not accidentally live. You know, I don't do this. I purposely went live today just because I just knew people were going to go berserk about this press conference. And I just, I just wanted to reach out to the public because I think people don't understand how things work. And I'm big about welcome, Betty. Kind of thing, understanding things. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm about do to, uh, the Cajun uh, name to have credentials. I have no clue. Um, you know, uh, you know the thing about search groups. Uh, some search groups are just ex exceptional in what they do. Okay, so that's the part that I really wanted you guys to see uh, was the part about the proud foots and so on and so forth. So. I'm about to open it up right now, you guys, actually, at that part. And I'm post pasting, posting, pinning, sorry, let's try that third time. I'm pinning the link in the chat for anybody that would like to join me on panel as well uh, to openly discuss these things. So 500,000 a year, damn. Whoops. <laughs> All right, one moment here, folks. Let me set this up for you real quick. Just a moment. And all right, that's set up. 
Let me pin this in the chat here as well. That pin now, we're good to go. And let's turn on the phone service. No moment though. Here we go. And bing bang boom. All right. We are on. Phone lines are on. The link is pinned in the chat. Anybody that would like to join me. Um let's do this and let's have some combo stations. Come on, come on. Um, let me drop that number. There is the number to the uh the channel 234 703 4047. Give me a call and uh, let's hear what you got to say. And again, guys, like I said, only got a couple rules here. One is obviously no victim shaming, and two, um, let's try and um respect each other's opinions and theories in the chat and or for anybody that's up here. That's all. Um, excuse me, sorry about that. So um there's a lot of questions i have a lot of questions that a lot of people earlier had a lot of people didn't get a chance to call in or um even express that so that's what we're doing and um i'm here for it guys welcome back cassie hello hello again two three four seven zero three four zero four seven or you can click that link in the chat and jump up here and show. Well, you don't have to show your face. You have to show your face for about three seconds in the background. So I can make sure it's your face that's going to be up here just to be safe. Uh, after that, you can shut it down and just use your icon to talk through. And that's that. Because um, there's a lot that we can discuss about this at this point. You know, there's a lot of different things that are bouncing around. Welcome, Evie Marie. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Views and opinions expressed by chat participants are solely their own and not necessarily considered evidence or fact. Thank you for joining us, and please have a respectful discussion. Thank you so much for that. And ba -dee -ba -dee -ba -dee boom boom Hello, hello. Hey. How you doing tonight? I'm good. Good, good, good. Yeah, like I said, she's. I don't always agree with her either on her you know, certain things she puts out, but she's really good at like breaking down evidence and stuff like that. And some of the things that she's put out, I have agreed with. So, you know, it just goes to see whatever people feel, they feel so on and so forth. So I'm not, I'm not against her. I just, no, I know, I know you are the way oh. she said that she was like Seth and, or I think she said Katie and Seth and even Chris. And I'm like, mm -hmm. for me, it's just right different because I've seen paperwork on both of them where they seem oh, yeah. to have the same problem and it's like why are we villain villainizing yeah. one yeah. more than the other because right. in all fairness if you do that you do that and that should be uh, a problem. And you know what I might have an answer to that honestly and I'll tell you why uh, I think I and this is why I think people are doing it because the first out of the two the first the two males. The first we saw come out was Chris, okay? And he came out hard and heavy. Boom, you know, and he presented himself in a stern fashion. Right. Presented himself at that, as that type of a person. So that judgment was made right out of the gate, okay? Then, Seth came out. And Seth was still presented himself in a structured way, I guess you could say, kind of stern. Yeah. But he, he had a little, he seemed to have a little bit more um compassion behind the way he was talking about things i guess for lack of better terms and i think that's why that judgment was made like that that's my opinion on that you know i could be wrong but that's how i took it um no, that's probably right that's fair right it, because i know immediately the first time i saw the interview the first interview with chris and katie i was like mm, this guy's a bit of a, a hard nose you know what i'm saying he's a little i don't know it's just something turned me and then as you have to be able to read people at the same time and look at different things and so on and so forth. Then I saw Seth and I was like, well, um, 
you know, he comes off as a strict parent as well. But he also showed, see, another thing, too, was he showed certain emotion I don't, that Chris didn't seem to show. And I think people took that as he didn't have any at all, just because but, of the way he presents himself. You know what I'm and, saying? And I do agree, but at the same time, you kind of have to, like, for me personally, I think about all that, too. And I'm like, well, take a step back, right? This guy has worked construction. Mm -hmm. It's clear he has a job where he travels. Mm -hmm. He's been in his life for seven years. Seth has got 15. And he's the dad. You know what I mean? Right. No, I understand that completely. Absolutely. You have to look at it. I mean, you can't just take, okay, how, how, what is that term? You can't take everything for face value. I get that's, you know, what you see on the surface isn't always what it actually is. You know, I get that wholeheartedly. Um, um, and now <laughs> that's something else. we, you looked at some of those documents that we were looking at too, um, as well at some point, didn't you, uh, clue remember the documents we were looking at that showed mm -hmm. the stuff that we're talking about as far as Seth is concerned to put mm -hmm. him in a bad light as well. And some of the stuff and the struggles that, that Sebastian actually has that were not really presented, um, as they probably should have been in a sense. Um, in some ways, um, I I don't think that that they were fairly presenting him with like his health problems. I should say, um, internally and and things that he has uh, experienced um, uh, throughout his life as being. How can I explain this? It's hard to explain it, salty. Um, without putting certain things out there, so yeah, uh, it, you know what I'm trying to say though, because I know you looked at some of this stuff too, mm -hmm. um, because you had received the same stuff I did. So it, it's it's just hard, you guys. It's hard to like certain people. How can I put this? There's people that have had interactions with all of these people. Okay, it is frustrating. I agree, salty. There's people that have had interactions with all three all three of the parents <laughs> and you see certain things here and on the news and then you see uh, there's other things we don't see okay so therefore the um <clears throat> i guess the what am i trying to say here guys because i'm kind of myself up on myself um I guess the um, media narrative. Yeah, that that's that's been hard. Hey, draw. Welcome, Doc. Good to see you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, and that's the thing that kills me is there's a lot of people who are like Rawr, at Katie. Well, and that's the thing. That Truth be told, is, the only person we don't see anything in like, paper on is Katie. Yeah. I know. I agree. Um, uh, welcome, Vic. Hi. Um, you're going to have to turn your YouTube down in the background, Vic, because it's echoing back through, hon. Yeah. Uh, wow. Let me get it. Um, I've forgotten how to do it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Let me get it. Um, it's not working. No, we're good. I can do it. I know. I know now. Um, actually, it's been media uh, and social media. I agree with uh, Salty on that part of it. It's been both sides of it. Um, because you know, Salty said, "Yeah." So, are you are you good, Vix? Yeah, I turned it off in the end. <laughs> okay. Uh, Welcome. You Welcome. You Thank you for joining us. Good. How are you? Oh, good. Thanks. No, look, look how it goes. I'll turn it off. <sighs> yeah. Um, it was something that I um, tuned into just the other day. There's mm -hmm. some 
really crap shit going on um, in the UK with regards to children. And it always is. I mean, it's across the world. But mm -hmm. it seems um, that there's an actual way to do it. Um, and there's a guy that used to be ex-police officer. Um, he can't live anywhere. He can't have an address. He lives in a caravan. I know it's going off, but it, it, it it's like he's found something that's very credible through um, our government called Companies House, so that people that set up companies, et cetera, that they um, find a way through, like with child trafficking. And not only did he come across uh, Jelaine, what's her name, uh -huh. um, but Madeline and... We were even going like Nicola Bully. I mean, it is a, a complete mystery how people can just disappear. Agreed. Agreed. I, 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 I was kind of looking at this case and I'm thinking, well, this kid, you know, he's just a kid. It's, it's nothing um, that doesn't happen. It's tragic. It's awful. Um but this guy really is on something. Um, and I can't take it all in. My, I'm a, I'm a, I am a sponge, but I can only do so much. I'm thinking, no way you can't uh, do that. But, yes, you can manipulate a government to make anyone go missing if you, if you really want to. It's, on, it's almost on mafia degree. Um, mm -hmm. and beyond and up, uh, and up. If somebody is fed up, like I, I, I've been best friends with a woman. Um, her child wound me up no end until I kind of understood, but it was encroaching on my children mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And yes, we want to um, do everything we can. Um, but at one point I said, what are you going to do with it? I mean, it was so, um, I was only, I don't know, 29. I didn't understand. I thought that you had to show, you know, discipline and this, that and the other and all, everyone got it, you know, but mm -hmm. some kids don't. So I can see that this kid was a nuisance um, and he obviously was, I don't want to. You mean you mean he was seen as a nuisance by somebody? I think by everybody. <laughs> Poor little sod. Um, I know that back then I would have seen him that way. Um, there's a lot um, that goes into it, and given the right, uh, I I've got a cousin, and she is now fifty five. Um, she has been there all her life um okay. on on the down on the downside like literally you you cannot like violent and everything um and my auntie has that's been her life's work she's in her 70s now um it was a whooping cough vaccination just went out there but um it, oh. You don't know what struggle you're going to get when you when you come across your baby. You everyone wants the beautiful baby, the beautiful, you know, and they're all going to thrive, and everyone's going to be, you know, top not. Oh, I um, mean, are you, are you saying that what um, you think is that maybe because of the issues that he had, that the parents, you know, had issues with that, and they just maybe had enough with it or something and maybe that's where this came from possibly is that what you're saying or yeah maybe i mean people i don't think that katie did apart from when i saw that interview with nina and i thought oh don't like you anymore katie <laughs> you know like there she is with a camera doing all the you know the mind fuck with the second serving of the custody rubbish um mm -hmm. if, if that's even true but um 
it's it's quite disturbing to think that you can just cure the problem with a child that and they will they will demand 24 7. my auntie she she's on it and even in her 70s with my cousin um it's a lifelong thing uh and 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 that's the other end of that spectrum so i suspect it's 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 just that that thing it, it it's very sad but i suspect that not not with not with katie but i'm having that convo between seth and chris say well now you know what i had to part with you know how they're buddies you know how they were all mates until this happened um well, i don't that I, was, I didn't i didn't I didn't take that. I think that that was just put out there. I I think that I know what you're talking about, but I think it, he put it out oh. there as a comfort measure to state that we all yeah, got along. It could we have been about along. him or, or even, even Katie, you know, like often men will do that kind of thing. But um, this, this kid, uh, it, it all of it. I mean, but for me, no, I don't think he went off uh, without his shoes on. They're very particular on the, as we know, on right. the spectrum. You're you're not going to go without your shoes. You're not. I agree. I agree. Welcome, Draw. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hi there. Yeah. But that's my little input, and it's good to be back, and I hope you're doing okay. Thank you <laughs> very, very much. You. I appreciate that very much. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you, um, your input. Thank you so much, Bix. No, that's all right. Just a few, you know, thoughts. Um, but let's let's hope we we find him and um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, lots of love and that. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, I, I've got to head off to bed. It's very late here. I bet it is. Yeah, it's 10 here, so I'm sure it's really late there. Oh, have a good night and get some good sleep then. Thank you very much. Will do. Okay, Jacob. Bye-bye. Bye, Clue. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Thank you, um, Vix, very much. Welcome, Doc. How are you tonight? Well, I think I had spoken for a little while today on um, – T Rev uh, channel. I don't know if you know him. Yes. Uh, just about autism spectrum disorder in general. And I think this case has allowed us, or hopefully will allow us, to shine light on the autism spectrum disorders and also improve just everybody's understanding about the humanity of children yeah. and adults with developmental disorders. And one of the things that I said to when I was talking to T. Rev is that, well, first of all, I think that we have a, in general, a very poor understanding of autism spectrum and also ADHD. And sometimes I feel that Sebastian even by the chat community has or is vilified mm -hmm. as being, you know, a nuisance or a troublemaker, et cetera. And I think that we just, it, it's sort of a slippery slope because yeah. what I think happens is that we, like the Vix was just saying, part of what she said, I agree with, and some I don't, but, you know, I think every parent, hopes to have the perfect child, right? I mean, just Absolutely. like you have this romance idea that you're going to meet Mr. Perfect and Miss Perfect and you're going to live happily ever after. Right. The, tr the truth is, is that we're all broken in some way. Nobody's perfect. And because I think we have a misunderstanding about autism spectrum in general, mm -hmm. I, th I just, I guess I'm, I'm a little irritated. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I think that from the beginning, even, and I'm, this is not a finger pointing at any of the parents. Right. I actually fault in some ways law enforcement that I do not think that an adequate representation or uh, sort of a picture of Sebastian has been given to the public. We've just been working off of things like, oh, you know, he's going through adolescence and he has trouble making friends. And instead of a systematic presentation, either by the parents or by an expert that knew him or whatever, of who is Sebastian? Right. What, is, what are his unique gifts, talents, um, uh, abilities, and challenges? Mm -hmm. And we don't really have a uh, we don't have an understanding of that. So for me, I, I guess I'm frustrated that law enforcement has kind of gone on this wild goose chase in a sense, mm -hmm. because a child who is on the spectrum and what we call neurodivergent, not neurotypical. Right. If they've gone missing, let's just say it's not foul play, nothing at all like that. But if they go missing, the manner in which they would go missing and the choices that that kind of a child would make in the face of danger, risk, uh, outdoors, whatever, is completely different yes. from a child or an adolescent who is neurotypical. And so for me, as a clinician, I feel frustrated for and sad for the fact that I think from the get-go, we have not gotten a really clear idea about this child. Right. And so how do we then go on a search? How do we then are we told today in a presser that social media is, you know, is fueling mis or disinformation? Well, mm -hmm. frankly, so is the mainstream le legacy media. Yes. Because we have not been given an adequate. Nobody has. That's no. correct. So That's then, right. For them to point fingers. And I guess I take pause and I'm sure you guys take pause. And I'm sure many of the people in this chat do to yes. be told by, you know, L E that we're spreading misinformation, speculation, whatever. I actually think we've been trying very diligently to sort of with, you know, uh, what they call it, uh, critical thinking, yes. try to, you know, piece together a narrative that is very convoluted. And I, 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 I agree. And I'm glad you brought that up because I said a long time ago, it would be wonderful if we could at least see one, there, we've seen a little piece of it finally, but a piece of Sebastian's life on video or something to watch him interact with other people, to watch him interact in life, to know you can't just come out and say an autistic child has disappeared. Exactly. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Where do we go now? You know what I mean? So <clears throat> I agree with you wholeheartedly. That's an amazing way to put that, what you said, too. Because we don't know. And, and Salty was saying that earlier. We had this whole conversation earlier because there were documents that were put out that have some uh, variations of, of all the issues that Sebastian does deal with, okay? It was very hard. Like, there's a few of us that have this information. Salty has it. Clue has it. I have it. We don't want to just come out and blow it out onto the, the, the center stage for everybody because it does bring out other things too. And there's been very, it's been very hard, very hard to present that without bringing all this other stuff out at the same time. You know what I mean? I understand so, that. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was just going to say that was part of an issue that we've been dealing with as creators to try to, to present that. You know what I'm saying? Have um, you vetted this information? Um, that's, that's the other side of it too. Um, it The documents that we got were from both sides of the family we'll just say it that way and it shows a lot of issues that were um presented in his life about him from him so on and so forth and it they're, they're court documents they they are court documents thank you salty um but there's other things in there that we don't want to put out you see no, what i'm saying hard. and it's see, hard mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead for me um so how do i say this 
and I think I've said this before, maybe to you guys, I don't know. But I mean, I think that, that oh. things like autism spectrum and, and ADHD mm -hmm. by our society have, and any other mental health thing, but, but specifically autism spectrum, sorry, autism spectrum disorder and ADHD, yeah, yeah. these are neurological, developmental, hardwiring disabilities, frankly. Right. But in just because somebody has a disability, I think our society has looked at children, adults, whatever, through what I call a prism or a mm -hmm. lens of pathology. This person is weird. This person has um, is troubled. This person is um, violent, potentially. I've heard a lot of people in different chats saying, oh, people with autism don't know how to talk. I mean, there's so much misinformation just in general. Right. And I, with as a physician with the many patients I work with, I really, and the parents, because often the parents don't understand. And they're like, I want to know why my child is not thriving at school or they don't have a circle of friends. And like my own daughter said to me the other night, you know, mom, ADHD and autism, these are invisible disorders and it's like if you were to look at somebody in a wheelchair and you look said to them you're in a wheelchair and i don't understand why you don't stand up and walk just go ahead walk up the stairs and i think sometimes and very often actually i think people with uh, autism spectrum and adhd they have invisible disabilities that people do not understand that they may not be able to interact or to socialize exactly as neurotypical people do. Right. And my challenge, I'm, I'm going to hush in a second here, but my challenge as a physician is to really try to not only tell and explain and help and kind of lead parents to an understanding that these disabilities, and maybe it's wrong to say disabilities, these are challenges, developmental challenges but we need to start to look at them through a lens of, of strength and creativity. And there's right. a lot of positives. And each child on the spectrum is different. Yeah. And I, what I find frustrating about the way this whole thing has gone down is not one person in this whole investigation, whether it's parents, step-parents, uh, the only uh, per people close to from what I can get glean anything about this child is the school making a few new statements about how he really, um, you know, didn't have that many problems vis-a-vis -vis trying to socialize. He was mainstreamed. He is mainstreamed in the school. Yeah. But I, you know, work with the courts. I work, you know, with family courts, with families, whatever. And mm -hmm. I often find that even if you look at court documents, it depends on which side is it which parent is it which is it the defense is it the the um state who that they often can say things or pathologize a child in ways that may not actually be the truth or they can broad brush behaviors that maybe they're broad brushing because they don't understand what the child is really going through right. and i i just think we don't we don't Honestly, maybe you guys do based on some court reports, but I always look at court reports with a jaundiced eye. I always, I always say, you know, it's just like looking at a photograph. People asked me when the Summer Wells case happened, there was that photograph of her kind of looking bluish as she was sleeping maybe in the car. And people were like, tell me, is she dead or not? Is she dead or right. not? Like, How can I tell you if a child or anybody's dead based on one still photograph? Absolutely. And it's the same thing with Sebastian. We just simply don't have enough information about, you know, his level of of um, challenge or his level of giftedness, um, right. et cetera. So I'm just frustrated because if you don't understand this child and we don't have a clear picture from, let's say, the parents or from law enforcement, mm -hmm. and I don't mean a clear picture, but, you know, that, that's been colored by custody battles, anger, but just a, a clear clinical picture that we really can't know mm -hmm. if he even just going missing. How does a child on, let's say, on level one autism go missing, 
his going missing is going to look completely different from a child on level two autism, yeah, from a child absolutely. who is neurotypical teenager. And so, you know, here they are, they're doing searches and they're looking hither, thither and yon. But from my own experience, even kids and adolescents that are on the level three, uh, which is, you know, the most challenged, often nonverbal mm -hmm. autism, when they elope, first of all, it's usually out of uh, what we call a meltdown, an emotional meltdown, because they're they're triggered, they're they're sensory overloaded. Right. They they don't go running. I mean, even from my office historically, I've had pa patients go that have gone that have eloped because they become overwhelmed by being in the in the office. Mm -hmm. But they don't go running a mile away. No. Usually, what they do is they run to a little corner, twenty five mm -hmm. yards away, and they sit there and and they wait till they settle themselves down and see yes. themselves. Yeah. So you know, I I, I think. And I said this a, a couple of weeks ago and somebody on, in the chat said, well, I'm sure they did have an autism expert, um, you know, evaluate or, or, or help help law enforcement, you know, with their strategy. But we just don't even know that. But and they would still have to know him like personally, like parents can the parents have even stated, well, he's not an eloper. He doesn't. And that hasn't happened. But like I said, in a conversation with somebody else today. There's always a first time for everything that just may not have been pushed to that extreme at this point. You know what I mean? Exactly. So there needs to be, I, I full heartedly agree with you on this. There needs to be, and there needed to be in some senses, a, a bigger or, or a more in-depth description of this child when he went out uh, immediate so that people, you, like I said, you can't just come out and say, well, an autistic child is now missing. Right. First of all, I mean, just as far as like the community, the autism community, it's just like not politically correct anymore to say an autistic person. Mm -hmm. you know, what we say is a person with autism, a person with diabetes. I mean, so just to call somebody an autistic person, it just doesn't even that's not even right. the right way that it should be announced. It's right. Just as if like. um yeah, I remember at at uh, my job. This is back in Western Jersey. I remember the new HR guy. He came to. He asked me. He came to the clinic and he met my children at one point, and he met me. And he's like, um, "I see you in your chart or your HR chart. You're you're Hispanic." I'm like, "Correct." He's like, "Well, you're too you're too light colored to be Hispanic. You're not indigenous enough." I'm like, "Hello, what?" <laughs> And so, you know, it's as if somebody were to say, let's say Sebastian were Hispanic, is to say, a Hispanic boy went missing. Well, what does that even mean? Is the person Afro-Hispanic? Are they, right. you know, Caucasian-Hispanic? Right. Are they like my children who are indigenous? And so I just think I'm on ranting right now, and I'm sorry, but no, no, I no, don't it's, it's, think... It's understandable. What you've said, a lot of that, it, it's very important. I agree. Um but I also feel that there's other things that play because one big thing that you just reminded me of was Sebastian was struggling with friends, making friends. One thing he said, it broke my heart that he asked for for Christmas was he wanted friends, right? So what, whatever the reason was that this child may have walked out of that home per se, there are two registered SOs in that neighborhood, okay? And it could have been, I, I've been thinking about this for a while, and you just kind of re kind of like brought that along with something else said in chat to my mind. If he walked out of his home, regardless of what level he is or, or how bad off he is, he was always wanting friends. And he was probably going to be recip receptive to anybody that was nice right. to him. Okay. So if this person, per se, decides to pull up on the road that he's walking on, didn't have to walk very far as salty stated in there. He didn't have to go very far to get to this person's house. That person could have grabbed him. And that's the last we've seen of him because it's right there. You see what I'm saying? Um, but the thing, everything you just said is so very important though um, for law enforcement to be able to communicate to, if they want us to go look for this, they've asked for the public's help in multiple ways. There should be more of a communicative platform to speak on about everything that is wrong with this child because there's a lot that has gone on in his life that's that's with him and per se as compared to like my child that's on the spectrum they're completely different okay right they do have a lot of the same traits but Caden 
you would never ever know that he was autistic ever as mm -hmm. much as you're talking to me it's the same conversation there's mm -hmm. a few little quirks that are different but nothing like what sebastian carries okay therefore in turn when you put out a missing person's um bulletin, poster, bulletin okay. thank you and you're saying hey this child's missing and he's autistic what do you mean autistic does right. he do this does he do that can he is do he this verbal is he yes right. you know and yes. here's the, here's the other thing is i was saying to to t-rev uh on his little chat or whatever is this this concept of the, what we call the theory of the mind and it's something that most children develop at about age four to five which many many people with autism many people never with autism to develop this and that is the theory of the mind is to be able to look let's say even at your mom who mm -hmm. may be frustrated with you or your dad or a stranger and to be able to say i feel this inside and that person i wonder if they feel the same way or mm -hmm. i wonder if this person is dangerous or not and so so it, 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 he's much more vulnerable Right. If he's gone out on his own to yes, somebody, yes. whether the person is an SO or not, to not understanding, you know, the, the signals, if he doesn't, if he has not developed what we call theory of the mind, mm -hmm. you know, in the little that I've seen your son interact with you on the, your channel, yes, to yes. me, your son has developed theory of the mind. Oh, he yes. does understand these nuances. Yes. But from what I can get from what the little we've been told, I don't think Sebastian has. So therefore, he's much more vulnerable to strangers. Very much and so. yet none of this has been explained to the general public. So that's where I stand tonight. I'm sad. And I guess I'm a little mad that L.E. has to sort of, um, you know, finger point and be sort of vitriolic towards um, um, social media. I get it. Yes. The only last thing I'm going to say is, you know, you think you found a pair of eyeglasses, all they have to do is go to an optometrist's office. In mm -hmm. 30 seconds, they can figure out what the prescription of any eyeglass is. That's they can true. call his optometrist and say, is this a match or not? That's right. it. That doesn't, this is not like rocket science. And I'm surprised the police couldn't even, that we're working on it. What do you mean you're working on it? it should well, be um, I don't think that they're wanting to put that out there as well because i think that they're uh, i think that there's they want us to back off for one okay I agree. and that's that's one thing now i do know that of course they're going to have to vet who found the glasses where they found them who that person is if they know anybody else in the family if there's any kind of a link so on and so forth that may take a little time not a lot but a little more time but you're right the glasses are very easy to deal with bing bang boom you're done okay but i think I don't think they want to put certain information out at this point because one, they want us to back off. I get that. Okay. And they don't want the ex extra ordinary interest from uh, other people that have gotten involved from the outside as well. They're trying, I think they're trying to keep a lot more closer to their chest than what they're putting out to us. You see what I'm saying? I understand. Um, and I think that's what it's about personally. Um, it, <laughs> The, the glasses thing I knew was going to blow things up today. I knew it was going to, and it did. Um, you know, and I wish people would not go forward with certain things until they have certain information, because then, you know, it's going to cause a whirlwind in other ways. And it could cause some misinformation to be put out, too. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, you're, you, one thing I've never, just, I've never agreed with in some ways, and people may disagree with me, that's okay. But when law enforcement take on these cases and then they come forth through a press conference or a news broadcast or something and they say, we need the public's help. We right. want the public's help. Can you help us this way? Can you help us that way? You're going to get people that are going to help you, but they're going to be involved. They're going to fully involve themselves in one way or another. And it interests people. They want to help in that sense. Some people, some people get carried away. I agree. But you need to, the communication. I fully, fully believe the communication from law enforcement to the public, per se, needs to be a lot clearer, a lot more structured, I guess you could say, a lot more organized. And I think they can do that without giving too much more information than what they want to. 
Absolutely. Just, just but, by doing certain things. I agree. But by by saying out of one side of the mouth, we need your help. We need this. We need searchers. But you've mm -hmm. given people nothing to really go on. And then in the other side of your mouth, that oppressors say, you know, social media and the public is really not helping us at all. Well, maybe you should then maybe they need to reach out to people that know more about specific areas uh, like autism or whatever and 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 utilize more strategically and more surgically the mm -hmm. knowledge that a lot of people on uh, a lot of content creators do have information or knowledge about rather yeah. than just kind of basically disrespecting and i i don't think that that propels forward this child's um search or the investigation so i i know i agree and like i said i i agree and I've, I've i've said this i said this earlier today like it's it they don't have to do anything police don't have to do anything it's not their our business in some senses but when you all i'm saying is because i'm split in between two on this when you ask the public for help I think maybe just organization as far as the way you communicate is all I'm saying. A little more, especially in a specific case like this. Now, other than that, no, I don't think, you know, and I just saw somebody in chat said it. We're not owed anything. I do agree with that at all, you know. But if you ask for help, I just think they need to have a little bit more info to hand the public if they want them to approach the situation in a certain type of way is all I'm saying. That's all. And I do agree with you in that. Uh, and the other things that you said as far as knowing about this child going forward as you approach it, that's all I'm saying. That's one big thing that I had had a problem with from the beginning. Like, what level is he? Is he, you know, all they said was that he was high functioning, but then somebody else on the other side said, well, he's really not that high functioning, but is he or isn't he? Is he or isn't he? What can he do or not do? How does he understand you when you talk to him? What does he, what does he do in a daily day? You know what I mean? Things like that. And some of it was explained, but I think there was kind of an unbalance with it between parents. One sees it one way, one sees it another way. And so, that's why I'm saying it should not be through the lens of parents that any parent that um, if, if, if there's arguing custody and there's resentment or whatever's going on, that's why having a third party just say, let it, let, you know, here, here are sort of the demographics of this particular missing child. And right. just to go one, two, it, you don't have to divulge anything personal, but you can say, these are his habits. He is verbal. He is this, 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 whatever it is. And mm -hmm. if you see this person and they're, they're, and they're, they're you you approach them, this is how he would best respond. That kind of a thing. Yeah. But instead, we're just getting lots, layers and layers and layers of a, many blended families here that are obviously have been in crisis long before he went missing. Sure. Sure. I can see that. And that's a good point that some of his problems probably were under control with his medication that he hasn't had for five weeks now. So that's going to be completely in another realm now. So I, I get that. That's a good point too. And what medication is he on? I mean, we, that's what we don't know. You and know that's not appropriate either, because guess what I was saying earlier, it's a lot of times because of the emotional dysregulation in people with, uh, with autism, mm -hmm. I have to prescribe a low dose antipsychotic slash mood stabilizer. Right. If, if people are off of that, they can melt down and become undone very much more easily. But sure. sometimes it's just an, an, an ADHD medicine because of the, those two things are co-occurring in, in people on the spectrum. If right. they're off their stimulant for five weeks, it, it really won't be as impactful. But it, it isn't helpful, I mean, to somebody like me to be say they're on a medicine and they need it. Well, that doesn't really help. Got you. Yeah, no, Thank that makes you. sense. That makes sense. Absolutely. Um, sure. Real quick, Leslie. Hello? No, I was just going to say, before Dra drops down, I, I want to ask her a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, draw also. Uh, Leslie is asking, can you ask her why it takes children with Down syndrome to get tested to see if they have a form of autism? Excellent question. Okay, so in recent years, we have discovered, so to speak, that down syndrome is a, is a spectrum disorder as well not spectrum as in autism but it's it's 
uh, neurologically and physiologically a spectrum. So we used to think, oh, everybody with Downs is going to die early. They're going to have heart problems. They're immunocompromised. But what we've realized over the past decade or so is actually, you know, some they're on a spectrum. Some have absolutely no physical problems vis-a-vis their cardiac status, their health or immune risks. And, you know, and, and, and again, um, with respect to Down syndrome, there is overlap in the sense uh, with autism spectrum, there can be, because you're dealing with um, neurological hardwiring. And so you're dealing with um, probably what we call traits of autism Mm -hmm. that have to do with the prefrontal cortex and what we call executive dysfunction, like making decisions, impulse control, uh, finishing projects, that kind of thing. The difference between somebody with Down syndrome and on the spectrum, and I think there's a lot of uh, lack of information, people think that, that because somebody's on the spectrum, that they have cognitive, like intellectual disability. It is not really an intellectual disability. It's right. a developmental disability that has more to do <clears throat> with um, social cues, uh, verbal ability to express oneself, um, things around uh, gotcha. sensory stuff. It's not, but a lot of people say, oh, the person is, you know, we don't use the R word anymore, as we know. Right, I'm right. going to say it politically, totally incorrect. But that they're they're cognitively dull, or they're co- or sometimes we see the opposite. Oh, a person has Asperger's, which, by the way, that does not that term no longer exists in the lexicon. It's it's level one is the high level functioning, which used to be called Asperger's, or level two or level three. Three, okay. where a person needs much more support. They often aren't verbal. But they doesn't mean that doesn't mean that they're cognitively impaired. What right. we now know is that a lot of people on autism with level three, they have a totally normal cognitive brain. They know what's going on. It's a question of their inability to express verbally um, and emotionally what's going on in their mind. So it's very complex. And I'm sorry. It, that it, I can't it, well, uh, no, no, no. You're wonderful because I want since you're here and and. Great, just one moment, because I want to hear what you have to say, too. But this document, this one part I can read to you, uh, Salty presented it and said this, we can probably put this out because it doesn't direct any other thing. But this tells a little bit, you know, it says that our son suffers from, and I know a lot of you knew this already, but uh, a rare condition called 6Q27 chromosomal deletion syndrome. Okay, that's as well. Okay, now, among the symptoms that he suffers from are incidents of acting out where he hits and bites himself, okay? Now, see, that was something I didn't know until I saw this document. They never presented that to us when we first heard about him. Um, in fact, I think we were kind of told the opposite of that. So uh, he has been known to throw himself on the ground during these incidents. This is a very common thing for him, and others have witnessed him doing so. Um, I have filed here with declarations from some other of these witnesses that have seen this. So, you know, that tells a little bit more about him. now. As you were saying in the beginning, uh, draw, that wasn't something we were kind of told the opposite. He doesn't do things like that, really, so on and so forth. Now, um, but that I'm sorry, I don't think that's related necessarily to this genetic cue. What I don't know what you just said it was. Uh, um, yeah, no, uh, were, I think know, we were putting that out there as part of the autism part of it. They, okay, they blended together. See, it's see, but this is what really frustrates me because <laughs> the issue around. Um, in, with the autism spectrum is there is an emotional, what we call emotional dysregulation. It mm-hmm. can be severe or it can be very mild. And right. usually the emotional dysregulation, many people who are not well informed will say, he's having a tantrum. She's being spoiled. It has nothing to do with tantrum behavior. It has. It's not a tantrum. It is emotional dysregulation that is triggered by right. a sensory sensitivity, some, yes. maybe somebody yelling at them, maybe loud music, maybe too many people close to them. So to me, it is not meaningful, frankly, 
to here that he bites himself. He throws himself on the ground. Mm -hmm. Those are very common, even in what we call level one, used to be called Asperger. You know, professionals. I've seen professionals that have beyond uh, a master's degree that do that to themselves, that Mm -hmm. hit themselves, bang their head when they get frustrated. That's not a tantrum, and that is not that does not mean there's like something horribly wrong. What that means is that individual needs to be helped to figure out what triggers them to that point. Right, right. The so trigger. that they don't have to get to that. Because once somebody gets to that point where they're banging their head or they're biting themselves, then they're it's like they're they're too deep into that behavior there's very upset neurologically it's like a neurologic storm in a way and mm-hmm. so our role as parents teachers caregivers b- siblings even even partners boyfriend girlfriend is to help that person figure out what are that's a lot of what i do during my days what are the triggers tell me a bit about what makes you you know get to that point and you can only figure that out when the person's not already there. So what, so, I mean, what do, you, what do you think maybe could have happened in his scenario? Yeah, so um, so uh, just to add to that, so to me, for somebody in a court document to say we've had friends or witnesses attest to this, mm-hmm. that as a clinician is not at all meaningful. What I would, uh, that, yes. I've seen many people that I never have met before, but I see them in public or in the library, and I know that the child is having a meltdown. Right. I could having me or any other person go to court and say, "Yes, I've seen that child bite himself." That's not meaningful. What I would want from an, a, a court document w- would be um, that that per- child needs what needs to be is meaningful is for s- that child to be have a full neuropsychological and psychiatric evaluation so right. that that you're not speaking to just the behaviors but what triggers them this and was that, this was his father that, describing him in the in the, the court documents is what this was with right. his father yeah so that's not i'm not saying it's not meaningful i mean it's meaningful obviously but it's more meaningful to understand what triggers that what drives that and how do you help somebody learn and they and folks can learn to -hmm. control that and to say before they get to that point i'm really upset so now let's go back to your question which is kind of what i t revs asked me today well what could have happened okay what could have happened is what i've seen actually happen to many of my patients and sometimes even in my office where Mm -hmm. somebody gets a meltdown and then they start that I've had patients literally within a few months ago hit me. I'm like out of the blue. I'm like, I think we're doing play therapy or whatever and mm-hmm. everything is fine. And something has upset them. And then they smack me in the okay. face and I'm like, and then they'll walk out of the room and then the parents follow them. And we, fi- but in that moment, we can't talk about that, but sure. in the next, maybe an hour later, we bring them back and say, can you tell me what happened? And then they might say, I remember that when I was on the playground and I was playing like I was playing in, in with the play sand or whatever we're doing in the therapy session, mm-hmm. that a boy was really mean to me. And it, so you see what I'm saying? And then I mean, that something was a trigger to bring that back. that moment back into action right here. Exacto. Right. So let's go back now to the moment he left. Let's mm. say he's missing and there's zero foul play. Like mm-hmm. the police say, mm-hmm. he may have been triggered and had what we call a meltdown. And in this moment, his meltdown may never have been to have walked out of the house. Okay. Because I've seen that before in my office where the parents will tell me, my child's never walked out of that, or they'll report from school. My daughter has walked, has left the school and slammed doors and broke things, and that's never happened. And then the okay. school gives the child detention. Well, that is not the answer. But right. my point to you, let's look at the moment that night that he left. Maybe, let's say he left. Maybe he was in the middle of what we call a meltdown, and he, he did take off. Mm-hmm. But usually, generally speaking, you don't see a child on the spectrum or an adolescent take off and go 10 miles down the road. 
huh, usually what they do is they're they're leaving the situation so that they can m- minimize the 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 sensory overload and the, the intensity of it right yeah so then they go maybe 10 yards or 20 yards outside and they sit in a corner and they try to self soothe you see but then yes you're right maybe in this case he may have walked three blocks and somebody picked him up we don't know or even just right to the corner sat down by a tree and somebody stops and sees him and grabs him and we're, they're off and we don't see him again right okay exactly so got you. you know, and so in that sense, is 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 the parent necessarily to blame? That can happen in a in the blink of an eye. Right. So no, I can see what you're saying. No, I mean absolutely. And and to go out of the home without being undetected, which she has spoke upon herself saying that he does like to slink and slither and sneak and get around things. She he could have gotten out past her without her seeing or hearing anything, um, because something the thud that was heard could have been something that happened that he got upset about and out he goes, and here we are. So it, it, that does make sense. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, you know, I think all things are still on the table and I'm, and now I will apologize yet again to Cluminati that I must've driven her off the panel. Oh no, no, no. She, she has to go to bed early because of something they're doing tomorrow. And she wanted to watch something on TV before she did. She said so. Um, right. well, uh, about anyways, so I hope about that that helps. Some I forgot what the exact question was that was asked. I just I just wondered what you thought it was, and I know Gray had uh, a question for you before you dropped down. She said, and I'm sorry, Gray, for talking so long, but go ahead with what you were going to ask. Oh my gosh, no problem. I was totally enthralled by what uh, Draw was saying. <laughs> right. right. Um, it, it has a lot to do with what I mean. I think I'm. It's much more simplified <laughs> from my perspective, yeah. um, but it made a lot of sense and through this whole thing, we all have cases that are closer to us than others, right? I've mm-hmm. been involved in true crime for 20 years. Um, Trinity Backus, for instance, was a redhead who was an artist. My oh, daughter yes. is a redhead and an artist. So I, I, I latched onto that case. Um, you know, the Idaho four, I don't have any sorority college kids. So I, I, you know, I can separate myself from that one a little bit, but this one, I also have an autistic cousin, um, who has passed, he, he's older than, he was older than myself and, um, sure. passed two years ago before he passed, he actually, um, was in my mother's custody. Um, so he was kind of a cousin, but like a brother. Um, and he had a tendency to run off and, and things like that. He was not high functioning. Mm-hmm. And throughout this, in the beginning, it, it, it didn't, the first, you know, week or so it, it didn't bother me, but it seemed like the further it went, the more times I heard high functioning, the more times I thought that we were, I don't want to label anybody, but we were not doing Sebastian a service by calling him high functioning, because I don't think that the majority of people understand what that means in an autistic right. person. Right. And it, it means, yes, they, they are high, they are brilliant. They are incredibly smart. They can make themselves a sandwich. They can, get in the shower they can you know like things like that but to say someone's high functioning and just has a social disorder I think did him a disservice because I have social anxiety I'm socially awkward I'm not autistic right so to say when someone is socially awkward yes that is true but with that becomes behavioral things you're not just so it's it's you're socially awkward but be, as a result of that, you behave differently. You mm-hmm. do inappropriate things that you don't realize are inappropriate. They they, they have no clue that it is inappropriate. Right. Um, you know, but they may do inappropriate things. And I just, it, the more, the, the longer this goes on and the, the more I hear high functioning, it just... It, it, it's been bothering me because I think about my cousin it, and I think about it. It's definitely been well. misinterpreted, yeah. It, well, the, the, actually, to be honest, the there's a whole like portion of the autism community where the the the, the lexicon or the terminology high and low functioning is completely fallen out of favor. Number one, because it's it's kind of um, you know it's putting a mark on you by saying he's yeah. high functioning, yeah. he's low, but also exactly like you're saying, to, you can be. High as high functioning and be in every aspect of your life. When let's say you're on the on the spectrum and you want to call somebody 
I we do it by levels. That's the way medical does it now. So you could let's say be level one, which mm. you know you said your child um, uh, Dago is level from what you've told us. Yeah. Yes, yeah, level so, one. Level one, but that doesn't that doesn't describe your child. That just describes part of who he is. But then that's where you where I don't know what the caller here is name. Her name is I'm right gray. now. But, <laughs> gray. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes, it's okay. gray. Draw. I talk to okay. you all the time. Yeah. Uh, and like no. for instance, what you said, Gray. That's I'm glad you said that. Sorry, uh, Gray. Uh, draw. I meant. Um, like Caden is very, very, very. I hate to use the term high functioning, Gray. Gray. I'm sorry, but what I mean is like you've all seen him act with me here. Like nothing's wrong. Now, if somebody were to start screaming around him, he breaks down completely. Like exactly. you would. Yes. Okay, yeah, or loud yeah. bangs. He 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 cowers and he he gets. Those are the points that people don't see because it doesn't happen around him because we try to keep that away from exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so I, yes. There you so go. I think you're right, Gray, to be upset by the fact that this word high functioning is like it it doesn't describe who the the essence of who your cousin was, right? Right. And right. And, and and likewise, if yeah somebody says oh sebastian's high functioning he can be high functioning or level one but again he the, the emotional it doesn't mean he can survive on his own no and and the emotional <laughs> dysregulation piece that piece of emotional dysregulation is is fair is a common thread so to me in court papers it, it, i'm not surprised even if he's a level one with autism level one Mm -hmm. the, those things that, you know, biting yourself, this kind of thing, these are common things. And yes, I, I, I don't think that that makes him necessarily more dangerous or whatever. What that says to me is that he likely needed more intervention from professionals. Right. And usually that also means that we also have to help the parents mm -hmm. and to teach the parents so that they can appropriately parent or, or better parent with more understanding for their child so you know i'm just this is like you know this is this is close to my heart it is it's it's, it's sure. sad it's a terrible situation a lot of us. yeah a my, lot of us my cousin used to run. go ahead honey. a lot Sorry. like we, I, no i was just saying my, my cousin was a runner um and it, it's ironic because when my aunt got older she her remaining kids they each took my cousin for a week to see, you know, when my aunt eventually would pass, which sibling would be best suited to take on my cousin. And mm -hmm. um, he was with my, my other cousin. And my it, it was almost like, a, like, it sounds ridiculous, but it was almost like a scene from Rayman or the movie. My, my cousin had left and my cousin Donald um, went to make a grilled cheese and the fire alarm went off. And he didn't know what to do. Like, he just he literally like threw the pan put his hands over his ears and mm -hmm. left the building and they had to call my like it was a whole big it was a whole big thing um, my child done things like that multiple times it's the same yeah. thing I, I i get it ironically enough you know when it when my aunt did pass it it wasn't any of his siblings that that took him on it was my family um and I just, I don't know. It's just, I, I get it. I get it. Sad. <laughs> like that this, I understand. This I do. Out there somewhere. Um, it's a very hard thing. And like I said, it to pulls tell on the, the public heart that thing. he's high functioning, I think, gives a mis, a misinterpretation I, that I agree. I agree. Himself and he can do this and he can do that. And maybe he can, but to some extent, high though, functioning that's means he, he's, they're brilliant people, but they're, they're socially and, and more so than socially, it's more behaviorally. They, they, I don't care. They can't, they need a little assistance. And I just, I, just the longer this goes on, the more I, the more I hear high functioning from you know not not like other podcasts or you know Seth or well, Kate, like I, parents. I think that it's like, been oh, misinterpreted <laughs> at this point. I think it's been misinterpreted. Honestly, I do. I think been... the lack of uh, um, education on the public's part, to be honest. Absolutely, you know, I, I absolutely. Do. Take care, Twelve Gates. Thank you and welcome, Mind of Monsters. How are you tonight? Can you hear me? I'm muted. Oh, How there are you? Go. you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Figured I'd jump up here and put my two cents in. So Absolutely. I have a, I have a sister that is severely physically disabled and autistic, and she is the sweetest, 
sweetest girl you will ever come in contact with. I'll tell you a story about her. She has fits. It's what we call them. She has her moments. She has the mentality of a nine-year-old. She's 25 years old. She's heavily diagnosed and heavily mm -hmm. medicated most of the time. She, um, we were at Cracker Barrel. And we had warned the waitress several times to keep her distance from my sister. Mm -hmm. The waitress did not listen. There was nothing that triggered Tamara. There was no, we were eating dinner. And she literally took a chunk out of this woman's arm for no reason other than the fact that she took a notion to do it. There's not a book that you get when you have an autistic child. Nope. There's not a chart that you get when you have an autistic child. You don't get a playbook. This is how your autistic child's going to act. This is what your autistic child's going to do. I've been around her her entire life. She's wheelchair bound, has not walked since she was four years old. Loud noises, that's a no-no. Dogs barking, that's not going to happen. Tamara doesn't get her way. You will know it that she doesn't get her way. Mm -hmm. What we know uh -huh. about Sebastian is that he likes to hide. He's mm -hmm. very intelligent and plays games. That's really all we've been told. And it, that it's also been, it's been denied in some senses that, well, he's not that bad. He's actually pretty normal. We've heard he's, uh, he doesn't do this. I've never seen that happen. This doesn't happen. That's how it's been explained to us. In turn, we're expecting, and, and I hate to use this example, we're expecting to see my child basically out there on his own because that's what I had in my mind when I heard all these things. And then you go and read this, some of these things here that I just read and think about some of these other things that could be going on. Take away the fact that the child hasn't had medication in five weeks to control these things on top of the other things that he has going on. That's a whole different scenario to me, you guys. Completely different child and way more susceptible to um, uh, you know, life in itself and in a bad way, in my opinion, for lack of better terms. So completely changes the story to me, in my opinion. And Gray, you're right. As you said that, it, it, weirdly as it is that you brought that up tonight about the whole high-functioning scenario, it doesn't fit with him. I'm sorry, but it doesn't in that sense. I don't agree with that anymore. Um, Thank you. I, I watched a small video of him that was put out. Okay, and I watched his reactions to a Plinko game and listened to his voice, and it changed my mind there. And then reading these things there, you put those things together and think about the things that were said, like Draw brought up. We weren't really schooled on who this child is, other than the fact, like I said, you can't just say this child's missing and he's autistic. Okay, we, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, and, and you know, with a, all of us being in true crime, we always have to look for a silver lining, right? So, God forbid, like, if that is the silver lining in this, and that is that the public or our community or our YouTube people, and, you know, get a little bit of better understanding of autism, then maybe that's the silver lining. Right. I, I, I pray to God that there's more. But, yes, I see what you're saying. Um, uh, was it? Go ahead, Mind of Monsters. If I interrupted, I didn't mean to. I just you're wanted to. Right. I wanted to this agree with what you were porch. saying. This is your front porch. I come up here to sit and rock with you. So I, did, I think this is a good conversation because I help. I think in some senses that it helps to maybe understand a little more about mm -hmm. the scenario, and then in turn, as judgments or speculations are being thought after, um looking at a situation to make it more understandable to some in some ways in my opinion is all i'm saying so i agree i'll tell you what i did the other night i am i have a channel but mm -hmm. i am don't i do not call myself or tag myself a youtuber i am an advocate for the missing i make flyers i talk to families i work with private detectives i do a lot in the background that i don't make public right because i am there for the missing so i had a family that had reached out to another creator that I work with, another advocate, 
This mm-hmm. was two years ago. She had an autistic son. He was kidnapped. We had ring camera footage of the vehicle that he got in when he left. This was in Ohio. So I've, I've not been covering Sebastian's case. I've shared him. I've shared his information sure. up until about a week and a half ago when I'd absolutely had all I could stand and figured I'd, I would start covering Sebastian's case and bring an outside look into his case that some people may not see. Mm -hmm. So I had Sandra. I reached out to Sandra and I said, hey, would you be willing to come up on my panel and talk about how it is in the life of a mom with a 15-year-old autistic son that likes to run away? Mm -hmm. We spent two hours on my channel the other night and she answered questions and talked about how you know the whole barefoot thing she said she wouldn't read much into it because when austin leaves austin leaves in a hurry and he doesn't take much with him he's also very intelligent Mm -hmm. she said that after she read up and looked into sebastian's case that sebastian reminds her a lot of austin Mm -hmm. so she was very well versed on sebastian's case when she came up she said that that Austin runs barefoot, so it's not unusual for an autistic child to be barefoot. It was brought up in my chat that it was cold that night. She also explained that autistic autistic children do not feel the cold like we do. The fact that he didn't have a jacket on, he didn't have shoes on. Somebody like me, I'm six foot tall and 150 pounds. I'd freeze to death outside without a jacket in Tennessee or Kentucky. Right. I moved to Florida because I'm, I literally just left Nashville and moved to Florida five years ago. I spent 30 years of my life there. So I know Hendersonville like the back of my hand. I know Nashville. I know Goodlettsville. I know Rivergate, Gallatin, the whole area. She's on my panel. We talked about autism. We talked about her son, the similarities between her son and Sebastian. And she put some really good information out there and answered a lot of really good questions that, you know, my chat. She was open book. Ask all the questions you want to. I'd actually had Austin on my panel when we were able to bring him home. I'll tell you how slick this little guy was. Once we finally got law enforcement involved and I called news stations and everything else to try to get coverage on his case. The police went and searched the home that he was in. He was in between the mattresses watching the police walk by. Because they're crafty and they're smart. Just because they've been tagged with the name autistic on their person does not mean that they are any different than you or me. Right. Because when I was growing up, I was sneaky too. I'll be honest. I was out the window and down at the railroad tracks partying with my friends when I was 13, 14 years old. I got nothing to hide. I'm an open book. Kids are sneaky especially when they want to be, if they set their mind to something, something else that we need to take into effect. And I will try to be as family friendly as I can. He's 15 years old. His body's going through changes. When your body goes through those changes, you have emotional changes that happen as well. That's something else that needs to be taken into effect when we're thinking about this child. You don't know what all he was had going on in his mind and his feelings and in his emotions. So I get a message yesterday from Sandra. Austin ran away again. Right after I had her on panel. I got off panel, went to sleep at 11.59. I got a message on Facebook that he had took off again. And she has cameras, locks, the whole nine yards in, on her house. Alarms, everything. He's learned how to disable everything. <laughs> and he got out and left. He's on a 72-hour hold. Had to be taken to the hospital once they actually found him. So these kids are crafty. Mm -hmm. But what's important in these missing cases is this is a child. Regardless if he's autistic or not, he's a child. He is a 15-year-old child that is missing out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. And if you say his name, he won't answer you. Yep. And that, that, you know, it's funny that you said that about what you said about the mattresses. <clears throat> one of the first things that I even asked, I was in one of the interviews and I asked some questions. One of the things I asked was how many, has the house been checked thoroughly, the attics, the walls? In, 
this one used to hide inside the attic walls. And then he would laugh because he wanted us to find him when he was younger. Okay. And we would freak out thinking he got out of the house again because he tried to, he was an escapist. He tried to get out of the house all the time when he was little. <clears throat> so my house was locked down like Fort Knox, Fort Knox, but, um, and he would crawl out windows. He would do this and do that and everything. I mean, my house was locked down folks and he still found ways to get out if he wanted to. So we were on top of him 24 seven. So, um, that was one of the first things I thought was, did they go through this house up and down? And they said 10 times, blah, blah, blah. And law enforcement said that. So, okay. But in the beginning, um, yeah, that was what I thought too. Um, it, I, I can't believe you said the mattress thing because he used to take naps in between the mattresses because he liked to hide. He would crawl into his toy box and he would go to sleep. Um, all of those things. So I'm I'm thinking these things in the beginning, forgetting that this child's 15, but I, imagining they had to have gone through this house top to bottom. It's a big house. So of course, and they said 10 times, 10 times. And I still doubted that they even went through all that. Um, and, and then another case crossed my mind and horrified me. Um, right, Salty, they said 10 times, was the case here in Ohio. A uh, Harley Dilly went missing. He was classified as ADHD, chronic ADHD, possibly on the spectrum. Uh, he went missing for, I think it was six weeks. And all he did was walk across the street to an empty house, climbed the antenna, crawled down into the chimney, and got stuck. And of course, because of the size of the chimney, his breathing couldn't commence any further, and he passed on and was in that chimney for six weeks. That horrified me because it was another... Another question to my mind about Sebastian. So I'm asking, did they check empty houses? Did they do this? Did they do that? These these children think of different things than what we would, okay? We would never think to do something like that. They do. So that's the, those are the things I was thinking early on in this. And I've been told throughout the whole housing complex, the new construction, that they've checked all these things. I, I think they need to check again because of those things. So. These all these points are very avid points because, like I said, we don't not everybody understands. Draw made great points, gray made awesome points, uh, mind of monsters made amazing points. None of nobody understands all these points of the way the mind works for these children, all the way. Okay, there's things that we would never think to do. Uh, thank you, Draw, so very much for, for joining me. It's always a pleasure when you're here. Um, but they like I would never think to go climb down a chimney. I mean, they go, I, 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 oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, no, oh. I, I just it, you kind of sparked a little thought in my head. I, I wanted to say that um, I had said my cousin was older than myself. I'm I'm almost fifty. Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. be forty eight in May. <laughs> um, God help me. But so he was older than me. So this was he was also raised in a very different time. If you, you know, compared to, you know, and my, my aunt and uncle, you know, the, he, he went to a certain school and, and this and that, but they did not necessarily have the tools or the knowledge to nurture him the way that currently we have the tools and the knowledge to, to be able to do. Um, and I think the parents themselves, it seems sad to me too, because they, they seem to lack kind of an insight on autism in, in the way that they um, can't I even really describe that. Sebastian. Like Katie right. and, and Clue, Clue brought up a great point. She said Katie and Chris could describe him. They, you know, they said he likes Legos. They said he loves to play Uno. They said that, you know, Seth has said, you know, he's unique. He's, he's a mini me. That's not really describing him. Like it, it shows no. almost, I think, I guess what I'm saying is, is, cultural and 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 age and and all that stuff also matters my you know my cousin being older than myself um my his parents my aunt and uncle didn't necessarily know what the heck they were doing mm -hmm. nor did they have resources to kind of figure it out so right do you know what i'm saying oh absolutely i, I, I I'm okay. tripping over my um, words at this point no 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 because <laughs> my, my I love that you have me up tonight i so appreciate it no, no, no. You're absolutely anytime. You know, you're welcome anytime you want to. But Mind of Monsters had a very good point um, when she said what she said. 
I've said this about all children, but especially with autistic or ADHD children or any child that's on any form of spectrum. Kids do not come with a handbook. They don't come with a set of instructions. Even kids that don't have it don't, okay? I've raised seven children, folks. Um, three of my children are chronic ADHD. This one's on the spectrum. Um, I have others that have other issues, too, that all go into whatever you want to call it. They're, they're, they're not all 100% perfect children. I don't think any child is, to be honest with you, but, you know, there's things. So... There is no handbook. So we have to learn and research and, and, and be a parent, okay? That's one of the biggest problems today. Be a parent, period, okay? Yep, I guess that maybe was kind of my point. Like, because I, I said several times, they didn't have resources, but they, they probably did years ago. It's, you have to invest. They didn't even invest. then. Yes. I was told that by a doctor about 10 years ago that he believes that I'm on the spectrum. This is hereditary, by the way, okay? Um, I'm, I'm chronic adult ADHD. If you guys haven't noticed, um, this is why I drink so much of this, because this brings me down to a calmer, more stable level. Cause if not, you guys would think I had a, uh, powder problem because I'm normally just nonstop going. Okay. It, it, it's, it's these things you learn over the years as you go through life. You know, I've never been medicated for this ever. I've always done what I've had to do it kind of i've grown out of some of it and i got older and fatter and all that fun stuff but mostly gen x i'm right there with you buddy <laughs> right. so it, it wasn't diagnosed back when i was a kid none of us were we were just bad kids that's all there was to it there was no autism there was no adhd or add or whatever so yeah. now this generation as parents have to say okay this is this this is that this is this 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 you need medication you don't you do you i mean it is what it is i will do anything in my power to make sure that my child has a good life one way or another the best i can but again there was no handbook there were no instructions i did the best i could and and and, and you have to do that guys you can't just sit back and go and sit in denial and say my there's nothing wrong with my child so i'm just going to treat him like every other child yeah. That's and and I, I don't think that Chris, Katie, or Seth really viewed it that way, but they're not letting the public into that side of them. I think they, they right. know. They, like, it's not that they don't know what they can't explain their child. They're just, they're in this state of fear and, and shock. And um, I can agree. Like, I can they agree. can't explain it. And, and a lot of people don't know how to handle it. A lot of people don't know how to handle exactly. it. Yeah. I sure wouldn't. Okay. And that's that's what the point I was trying to make when I was saying that. Um, because you hit a nerve, uh, Mind of Monsters, when you said that about the whole instruction booklet or the handbook or all that stuff. Because that's been part of my vocabulary ever since this child was born. Because there isn't one, guys. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you have to live it and learn it and 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 just keep learning it every day and have people help you. Have people, I've helped other people that don't know how to deal with it because I've experienced different things. And that's what we have to do as parents moving forward. You know, it's a, it's a real thing to me. So, and that is why this case has pulled on my heartstrings. And I've been so close to it this whole time because of those things. I, I highly, I have a very strong passion for this. I'll just put it that way. So I appreciate everything you guys have said tonight. I really do. Um, this has been an amazing panel with Draw and and things Clue said, Gray, and, and all you guys, please know that you're always welcome up here, by the way. And if I interrupt it, I'm so sorry. Keep going, please. Oh, no, you're the best. I'm going to hop down go and go back into chat with my people. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Thank you, Gray. You're the best. Thank you. Have a good one. You Have a good mind. one, Mon you Monster. Right? Mind the Monster. Yeah. Nice mind to meet you. Mind the Monster. It was a pleasure seeing you. Have a good one. Good night. So at, at this point, you guys, I think that it, it is a huge part of this, in my opinion, that, that there was really no, um, how can I say this? I, I think maybe it was in, see, I don't even know how I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. It was, it was under communicated, for lack of a better term, again to us the child that we were looking for that they were looking for the things that the places they should look for him the ways that they should look for him and the situations they should 
try to imagine that he would go to because we didn't know. They don't know. I mean, they can have the, you know, certain training. I'm sure that they use people that know these things, but you don't know that child. Um, you know, other children that you've encountered possibly, but this child's different. I can promise you that just as much as my child's different, just as much as Doodle's grandson is different or Mama Bear's children are different. Every child's different in their own way. And you have to approach each situation in a different way. So you can't just take a generic form and say, okay, this is what we got to do. Let's go do that. Granted, there's, there's generic things you can do, but you got to accelerate that as well. So maybe that's part of what the problem has been in some senses, maybe. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we haven't so, really got an look, inside look of Sebastian, the little clip that you're talking about. That's the first video that, that I've heard about right. or yes. seen where you actually get to watch Sebastian. You get to hear his voice. You mm -hmm. know, there's cases like Harmony Montgomery's case. We never got to hear yeah. her voice. There is no videos. No. There's nothing. No. I've never got to hear her voice. If you're not a member of her family or someone that has interacted with that child, you never got to hear her voice. Right. A lot of people didn't yeah. realize that she was, you know, she was autistic and had physical uh, medical stuff too. Right. But you wouldn't know that because we never got to see that. We never got to hear that. So think we, you know, that there is that clip, that video that we get to see Sebastian and how he interacted with other people. But on another note, when you have a missing child, there's also not a playbook that says these are the steps that you take when you have a missing child. When you have a missing loved one, emotions run high. And I speak from experience. You can't sleep. You can't think. You can't eat. You wake up wondering, do I deserve to wake up? Should I? Do I have the right to look at my phone? Do I have the right to eat dinner? Are these things that I'm supposed to do when I don't know where my child is? Right. I so agree. you can't take one clip. You can't take one interview and myself personally i stay away from interviews on youtube with families unless i'm the one that's doing them and i mean no disrespect to anybody that does interviews but things can oh, be misconstrued a family member can misspeak and it's taken and it's ran 10 miles down the road and it gets turned into a thousand different things when you're on a panel just like if you open your panel you've never had anybody on panel before you're never strike the first time you jump up on a panel I used to go live at two o'clock in the morning because I was terrified that somebody would be in my chat. <laughs> I get you, it. You learn how to interact with this community. And, and that's across the board, YouTube, true crime community, or whatever you want to call it, the true crime right, right. world over here. You learn how to interact with those people. So when you're on panel, even in StreamYard, if you don't turn your comments off, you got comments running up the side. So you're trying to see what people are saying. You're trying to pay attention to the host. You're trying to not mess anything up. You're trying not to say the wrong thing. And in the whole time, you haven't had sleep in days. Your mind's running a thousand miles an hour. And right. you're trying to remember everything that needs to be said. Where I came from, I've been in Twitter spaces since a week after Sebastian went missing. I just now started covering him on my channel. Right. So my point was that we don't <laughs> know his home dynamic. We know what we've heard. But we weren't there. We don't know what was going on. We don't That's know if something triggered him. And he jumped out the window and ran away. Mm -hmm. We don't know. You know. Like I said, these kids are smart. Yes, and they're resourceful. We don't know if he had a friend that had a cell phone that had internet on it. And That's forbid, what I said. Yes. Forbid this. I don't even want to put the words out there. But was groomed. And is gone. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't and know. He, these go, he went to public school too. Don't forget that. You know what I'm saying? So. And school um, laptops, those things are, those things are horrible. They can, they yep. can tell you, oh, your, your kid's laptops locked down. Your kid's laptops locked down. My kids are grown, but my oldest used to get on my space on his laptop. I'll go get my child right now. He can unlock the Chromebook right now. He showed me how to do it. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. These kids are resourceful, just like I was saying, Austin, he he learned how to disable every piece of security that Sandra has in her house and he gets out. He's also learned 
that there's some kind of control or something you can type in and communicate with the modem on your internet and open your mm -hmm. internet up. Mm -hmm. Some people, older people, people like myself that are not real tech savvy, if you don't lock your internet down, I can walk past your house and get on your Wi-Fi if it's an yeah. open network. Yes. Very much so. Hey, Tomboy. Very much so. Those are all true. Like I said, um, the day that this child, because I was told by his teachers, his principal, him, um, and his counselors, no, you don't have to worry about him getting on online with this. This is a Chromebook. It's a school locked out, this, that, and everything else. And he was sitting in my dining room not more than two weeks later. He said, Dad, come here and look at this. We, we collect toys. Everybody knows that. He does, too. We do it together. He's like, look at this figure. And I'm like, wait a minute. How the hell did you get on eBay from your – how did you do that? And he was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> and he did this a couple of things. And I was like, uh, no. But, yeah, he can, and just like he did with his, his Xbox and everything else he does. They're very smart, the things that they want to be smart with, okay? Now, you put a math book in front of him, and he'll laugh at you because he doesn't care about that. Right. He cares about these other things, so he focuses on those things, and it and it happens. So, <clears throat> you're welcome to come back up here, Gray, if you want to. It's still open. It's fine. Um, when I was growing up, we didn't have all the electronics that we have now. But the one thing we did have was cable. So mm -hmm. when you're, you're 10 and 12, you can't watch R-rated shows. Okay, that's fine. But our parents work nights. And when I say nights, that's generally overnight shift. Um, sure. So I'm like, okay, there's got to be a way to figure this out. It took me literally two minutes to figure out how to unlock the cable box. That's the way I was too. All that kind of stuff I could figure out like that. Yeah, I could, I could, I could fix a car. N no time flat, but I couldn't even figure out how to sew. Because it was something you were interested in, and you wanted to focus on that, so you did. Yeah, and sewing is slow. Well, it's obvious that you're very, um, with all the crafty stuff you do, <laughs> and the factory that you have behind you in that picture that nobody can see that you can <laughs> you put your yourself your 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 things to use by doing that kind of stuff i get it so um yeah, I, mean, absolutely. I don't know how many times i ran away and it was just because no no reason just because i did it twice um but i was too afraid um I was, oh, I could I, outrun my mom. Not a problem. My mother scared me. I'll just put it that way. So, uh, by the way, Mind of Monsters, if you don't mind, because I've tried four times and it gives me like a book. Can you put your link in the chat, please, to your channel for everybody else to be able to go to? Because I, I am <laughs> not a mod, sir, but I can put it in back chat. Or yeah, throw it in the back chat and then I can throw it down in the chat for you if you don't mind. Because um, I tried to and it gives me a block of a paragraph about that big. <clears throat> oh, I can put some back. Thank you. Yeah, this is if you look in the back chat, this is what happens when I click it. That's what it gives me. That's a oh, lot. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. So, but I would love uh, to be able to, especially for what you do, especially put your link out and everybody go subscribe to this because this is what I'm screaming about on a daily basis, guys, with missing children. Please. Um, so, if you wouldn't mind, I would greatly appreciate that. There it is right there. Awesome. Thank you. And yep, there it is. In chat. Boom. There you guys go. There's the link for Mind of Monsters. Please go check that out. Subscribe to it. It is a great cause. I as well have done that. And there we go. Thank you for that. Um. No, I, I, I understand where you're at with that, Tomboy, because that was me. You know, I wasn't as dramatic as this child is, but here again, this is hereditary in some senses. My wife has chronic ADHD. I have chronic ADHD. Um, and I have anxiety disorder, so does she. So we put that in the blender and we made Caden. 
and he in turn ended up on the spectrum as well as I probably am too, they said, uh, for certain things. So, and, and there's more of this out there. It's okay, Zelda. Have a great night, hon. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, long day for you, that's for sure. So, um, anyway, moving forward, I'm going to quit rambling. But I really appreciate everything that you guys have thrown into this tonight. This is very educational in a lot of ways. A lot of people, um, it, it's been very impressive, and I'm very happy with what has taken place tonight with all of you. I really appreciate it from all of you. And I would love to be able to do this more often. I think I may actually have a show because of this and bring in some more stuff on just autism and um, behavioral um, issues and things like that that they classify it as. I think that would be amazing. So <clears throat> y'all may be coming. Following this sign, it better be coffee and donuts with that go. <laughs> so be it. So be it. Um, what was if I can ask Mind of Monsters, if you back up a little bit, you in the very beginning when you jumped up here, you're talking about a case in Ohio. Mm -hmm. What was that case? Austin Lauer. So I had been um I was a mod on a big channel. I'm not gonna say the channel's name because I don't support what it turned into. That's but okay. I was a mod on a big channel and um I won't get into details because he gets angry with me. My okay. oldest son went missing. When he went missing, I jumped up on panel and I was devastated. I was right. absolutely devastated. And this is supposed to be a missing persons channel. Okay. So all I wanted was some kind of direction, help. I couldn't get law enforcement to help because he was an adult. I couldn't get anybody to listen. Of course. And I, I didn't know what to do. I'm, I'm literally going to social media, calling his high school friends on my Facebook, my not my channel face, my real Facebook, begging for help. I couldn't get anybody to help. I couldn't get nobody to help. So I was sitting one night and I thought, you know what? I took classes in school to do graphic design and TV production. I'm going to start. I'm going to change my channel because my channel was a farm channel. I mm -hmm. had four wheelers and I'm from Kentucky. So we own a property and, you know, go-karts and us just doing redneck stuff. So I changed and rebranded my whole channel and I self-taught how to handle missing cases from my own right. experience. So I worked with a big group of creators at the time that were advocates. And right. this mom had reached out in one of the Facebook groups that we had for help. Her son was missing. Mm -hmm. And this is how it happens a lot of times. These parents don't know where to go. Anybody right. that will listen because you can't, you can't just reach out to Dateline and say, hey, my kid's missing and they cover your kid. Exactly. You can't reach out to News Nation and say, hey, my kid's my kid's missing and they cover your kid. That's not how it works. So people have yep. learned that there is a missing true crime community on YouTube. So she comes to YouTube for help, goes to Facebook, in turn ends up on YouTube. So I'm live. I've got some another girl that I don't even think she's around anymore was on panel with me. And we were just covering Austin's case. Mm hmm. I had learned how to make flyers. I taught myself how to make flyers. So, and the, the, my first flyers are rough and they're horrible, but it was a thought that counted. So I had made him a flyer because he didn't have a missing flyer because law enforcement wouldn't help because he was a runaway. And so I'm, I'm talking about this kid and I'm like, you know, this, this is ridiculous, you know, and showing footage where mom had been live on Facebook and um, actually got handcuffed. And was threatened to be arrested because she was driving through a neighborhood calling her son's name. And a family friend came in my chat and said, uh, do you want mom on panel? I had never interviewed anybody mm -hmm. on YouTube. I talked to people on the phone, like call people and talk, yeah. you know, family members and stuff to get information to cover cases on my channel. I talked to detectives. I talked to FBI. I had never talked to no mom. So mom comes up on panel. I'll be honest, I was a nervous wreck. So I get to talking to her, and that's the moment when I realized I can do more for this mom. So we started, you know, working together, and it was a like a group of four of us, and we all started working together on this case. It was out of Ohio, and I don't want to give her exact location or anything, but it was a, a smaller city in Ohio, and uh, he had been talking to this 
adult woman mm -hmm. who is married. And the person she's married to, she had been grooming since he was 15. Mm -hmm. He was of age. Now, she married him. They have children together. She had started grooming Austin when Austin was younger. Well, they didn't, you know, Sandra didn't know this girl lived next door. He liked to go over there and play games and play with her kids. And, you know, because it doesn't go in your mind that this is some weirdo that's spending time with your kid. Right. So he finds a way and he's not supposed to have internet. He's not supposed to have a phone, laptop, nothing that he can get on the internet. He finds a way to get on the internet. Of course. And he starts talking to this girl through Snapchat. Yep. And messaging this girl. Well, he is at the neighbor's house while Sandra's at work. Thank God she had a ring camera on. Mm -hmm. He goes out the front door and gets in a van. So she calls law enforcement and says, hey, I know who has my kid. I know where he is. Help. They won't help. <clears throat> so we pushed as a community. We pushed and pushed and pushed till we were so loud. Law enforcement couldn't drown us out anymore. Exactly. And they had to go look for him. He was gone for several days. I think it was 11 days altogether is how long he was missing. Mm hmm but we screamed at the top of our lungs. I'm on the phone with local news stations talking to reporters going, why are you not covering his case? I was told by a local news reporter there in Ohio that they mainstream media can only cover what law enforcement allows them to cover that's, when they're local that's, channels. That's true. And he refused to cover that baby's case. We got yep. one local channel that was willing to step outside the box and cover his case. Law enforcement went to that house three times. After they, they didn't arrest her, they had her in handcuffs with her teenage daughter in the car having a complete and total meltdown on Facebook. When the officer was advised that he was live on Facebook that was being streamed on a YouTube channel, he promptly took her out of handcuffs. All she was doing was driving down the road and calling his name. So the police searched his house three times. All three times he was in between the mattresses with this girl's kids sitting on the mattress in a little row like little ducks on the on the bed you know when do you have children that are ages five to nine sitting together quietly that should have been a red flag they should have flipped the mattress yeah. up the first time yeah after it was all said and done law enforcement went back and watched body cam footage and they could see him peeking out of a crack of the mattress wow so it gets where a I mean, a lot of people are driving around, you know, they're putting up flyers, flyers are getting mm -hmm. taken down and you hear that more. It makes me sick and it wants, well, it makes yeah, me it happens a lot. Yeah, but it I happens. Hate that. They're taking down flyers, you know, and we don't know for sure who was taking down the flyers. I'm not going to put blame on this girl, but just, you know, read between no, the lines how they were getting come to come down. Well, I, I asked you because I'm in Ohio, as you probably have heard, and I swear when you, as soon as you said that name, I I I know that name. Um, I swear I remember this for some reason. How long ago did that happen? Uh, two, right at two years ago. I swear to God. Not to mention that that's my brother-in-law's last name. That's not who it is, but that's my brother-in-law's last name. So I was just like something about that case it's 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 clicking in my head i don't know why i'm in northeast ohio i'm not going to say exactly where i'm south of cleveland but okay um that that sounds so familiar to me for some reason i don't know why um but you're absolutely right i have three channels that are local channels here um wkbn wytv and the other one is a is a bounce off of that channel and that's fact we've tried to have things like that done around here and I have friends that are law enforcement officers that I've asked them clearly. My my father, my biological father, my uncle, and my grandfather were all three law enforcement. Okay, they don't they do that. They will not put anything out unless law enforcement tells them to. Because if there's a criminal case, it can interfere. They said, "I'm sorry, but just to put somebody's information out and say, hey, have you seen this kid?'" It shouldn't be a big deal, but it is in Ohio, especially. I don't know about other states, but here it is. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it needs changed. I agree that needs changed. Victoria said that. A lot of other people feel that way. That is something we should advocate to change because it's causing. Um, I don't know if you guys have followed me covering the um, thousands of 15,000 kids that went missing in a year in this state alone. 15,000 kids in one year. That makes no sense to me as to why it's not more important than it is. And it's because they're runaways. They're considered mm -hmm. runaways, so they don't classify that as important. A runaway turns into an abduction within minutes, seconds, folks. Understand that. that that's so why I'm covering this show that Doodle is putting together with me on this child trafficking thing. It's a thing now, folks. It's, it's a big thing now, okay? Runaway or no runaway. It still needs to be seen right now, not 24 hours from now, not three days from now. I don't care if they're 16, 17, 18, or 19. They're still a child in my mind, and they will still be taken advantage of. I know there's laws against adults. That's different. I get it. It's still a problem, okay? All of this falls into that bracket, and it drives me insane, which is why I'm here doing this right now. So, again... I swear it's that this state is horrible for this stuff, but I'm, I'm, my understanding is that it's everywhere now. And it, the law, the laws are a lot, a, a lot of the same laws in different States too, sadly, but. And it's like Amber oh. alerts. How many of those 15,000 children had an Amber alert? They don't get I that. Guarantee not 5% of them. Just, if they we had were one just, at all. Right. We were just talking about that. I'm signed in because of what I do through my phone to get national Amber Alerts. So if somebody goes missing in Kentucky, I get it here too. Sorry, I didn't mean that. But um, <laughs> you know what I was trying to do. Um, you know, when, when, when he went, when, when Sebastian went missing, I didn't get that. Um, when uh, Maddie went missing, I didn't get that. I barely get the ones in Ohio, okay? But I'm supposed to get them from all over the United States when they go missing because of what I do. It, it doesn't, it's not, it's not a, an organized, calculated system as it should be, in my opinion. That needs to be something that needs to be fixed as well. Time is huge when it comes to these cases, you guys. Huge. I don't agree with, well, your child's 16 years old. They probably just ran off because you made them mad. They'll be back. Don't worry about it. Call me back in 12 hours. My child could be dead in 12 hours, Okay or in another country in 12 hours. Do you understand? Like, this is what is not enforced and not made to be important right now for, like, it, just, it drives me nuts, guys. And, and it has to change, it does, it has to change. So I, you know, with all of us doing what we do, maybe it'll make a difference one of these days. I don't know, but I'm praying to God it does. Um, thank you, Doodle. There's the link again, for those of you that didn't get it. Um, the channel's called Mind of Monsters, and there she is. So, yeah, exactly. Every minute counts. Every minute. You know, if you can make a phone call, and as, as I've been saying for, for, for months now, guys, if you see something, say something. Don't mind your business anymore. It, it, it is not, you don't mind your business, people. You mind everybody else's business. If you see something that don't look right, you say something. I don't care. If you piss somebody off, you piss somebody off. It was worth it because you could have saved a child's life right there. That's mm -hmm. why we do that. Now. That's why I preach that now. Period. Exactly. Oh, Organize off. immediately. That's exactly it. Right away. Not in, in 24 hours. Not in 48 hours. Not in two weeks. Right now. It has to be enforced. It has to be made a thing. It just has to happen, you guys. Because it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop until we can stand up and say enough. That's enough. These are our children. You don't do this. Okay. It has to stop. And it's <laughs> like getting you. a silver alert. Yeah. I, have you ever tried to get a silver alert? It's, it's damn near impossible. You have to get a doctor to sign off on a silver. Alert. Right. Exactly. Clear alerts are the same way. Yep. I do agree. It's insane. And it's like here in Florida, we have the FDLE and you know, I've went through the NICMIC training. It's actually free if you guys are interested in, in, you know, learning how to handle missing cases. If you go on NICMIC's website, there is a uh, 
it's a program that you can go through and you get a certificate at the end of it saying that you graduated and all that fun stuff. But there's some really good information in there and it'll blow your mind to know when the last time the Amber Alert was reformed. Way too long. And as far as Maddie, I'll go, I'll tell you this. I live in Orlando. Do you know how I found out Maddie was missing? Disney has its own newspaper mm -hmm. and it came up on Newsbreak. That's how I found out Maddie's missing. And I'm right here, literally right here. There was nowhere near enough coverage on that. None. Yeah, it's it's sick. It's sick. My sister's sister in law is a detective with uh, West Palm Beach. She oh, didn't West even Palm. know if, she didn't even know for four days that there was a little girl missing. That's, that's I knew insane. within probably I'd say twelve hours tops something like that and it came up on my husband's news break it didn't even come through my phone and i've got 10 different things that watch for missing people on amber alerts and stuff that's insane it yeah. shouldn't be that way uh thank you very much shelly i didn't get to see who got those uh, but thank you for gifting those five memberships uh, for whoever who did receive those uh congrats and a welcome to the sauce i appreciate you guys very much and thank you again shelly now uh, there's a lot of things with this that need to change um mm -hmm. there's no way it's going to stop or no way that it, we're going to be able well okay for instance god i love grady judd okay because he has he's no nonsense he ain't playing I will show everything I can find from this man when he does it. And it's just one after another, after another, after another. Okay. I wish he was the sheriff in every city, in every state, in this nation. Because that's what we all need. Everybody needs that. Because that man does not quit. Um, but I, I, we, every, I think every law enforcement official needs to have the same mind and training that this man has. They need to implement something in that sense that makes that important like that okay and i know law enforcement has their hands full don't get me wrong I, like i said i'm related to law enforcement officers i have friends that are law enforcement officers i know the stories folks i get it okay i worked in in, in rescue and ems i know how all this stuff goes there's got to be a way to make this important there's got to be i mean there's just no two ways about it these kids are our future OK, and the way things are going right now. There is going to be no future. OK, it's very sad and I'm not trying to sound dramatic. I'm not trying to be. Oh, my God, but it is it's, it's important, guys. It is. Oh, my God. OK, because it's not getting any better. It's getting worse. So it is getting worse. And the worse. world we live in makes it easier. Social media yes. is a great tool. It's also what nightmares are made of absolutely every 40 absolutely. seconds a person comes up missing darren the the big c word that you're not allowed to use on t on tv or youtube <laughs> right think right. about how many cases were born out of that it yes. gave abusers the right to do what they wanted behind closed doors for how many months 100 percent. and now now that we have these illegal immigrants that are being shipped into our country and being put into homes of people that they're not even, these people aren't registered. They're going to people that we don't, they don't know if these people are good or bad people. And they're taking these children into their home. They could be horrible people. And these yeah. people are not registered. These children are not registered. Here you go. Here's some children. Do what you may. You know what I mean? It's disgusting, but that's what's going on and will be going on guys. Uh, yes, Bobby, I do. Um, it, it's just getting worse and, and you're you're absolutely right guys it, it's not nobody okay here's one of the biggest problems a lot of people are at the point now where if it's not my problem it's not my problem that's not a good thing this is why i say when you see something you say something you don't mind your business anymore we can't do that guys we cannot mind our business anymore we have to be very mindful of everything going on around us. You see a child that looks crazy, acting crazy, 
and this oh now stop it you know i'm your dad and blah 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 that kind of shit you go over there and you snatch that child until you get a cop in front of you and you fix that situation period i don't care if it gets you into a mess or not if you're wrong at the end of that then you're wrong you deal with the consequences at that point they will understand i promise you because it's happened right where i live at guys twice now it's happened in this in a walmart parking lot one time thank god for the people that were standing there but that child was almost gone that was what opened my eyes when i saw that actually happen in front of my face it blew my mind so it does happen um it it it, it, it talking about it just gets me so frustrated because there's so many things that um need to be changed that aren't even paid attention to nowadays they're not looked at as an important scenario. Well, we need to worry about money going to this and money going to that. What about this? What about that? Well, that's not important right now. We'll deal with that later. No, you won't because you haven't done it yet. It's been how many years and we're still talking about it. So come on. And there needs to be more um, communication with law enforcement. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that will blow your mind. So we had a missing case of an adult woman here in Florida and mm -hmm one of the advocates I worked with reached out to the local law enforcement and was like, have you got her in NamUs yet? And the detective was like, what's NamUs? What the hell did mm -hmm. you just say? What do you mm -hmm. mean? What is NamUs? How does Are everyone kidding me right now? Right. Right. Wow. But talking about see something, say something, there is a video. I wish I could think of the lady's name. And she was traveling from another country back into the U.S. and had her toddler son with her. Well, somebody on the plane thought she was acting strange with the kid. So she gets a hold of one of the airport employees and is like, hey, I think this kid's being trafficked. This lady had to show birth certificates and everything else that. to show that it yep. was her son. But saw somebody that. saw something that didn't set well with them and the they pilot. said something. That's right. It was the pilot of the plane. He he radioed and said, hey, we got a problem here, blah, blah, blah. And that's what I'm saying, guys. It caused the ruckus for a few minutes. That's fine. Mm -hmm. We know that that child belongs to that woman. She was irritated. I get it. But at the same time, she was grateful that that person was doing what they were doing. So it is what it is, guys. Unfortunately, in the world we live in right now, that's the way it's going to have to be. That's the only way anything's going to happen with this, you, you guys. And, and we all know that at this point. And I can't tell you how many times I've encountered people here and even in real life that say, I just don't have time to worry about that. What if it was your child? Exactly. What if, what if it is your child? Because there's the people, these are the same people that say, that'll never happen to me. That'll never happen to my child. And guess what? It does. It happens to everyone. That can never be an excuse, you guys, ever. Make time. Because it, it, like Doggo said, this is our future that right. are being snatched and put underground and put, you know, I we just moved to Orlando from Daytona. There is a huge resort on Beachside on A1A on um, it's what we call A1A. It's Atlantic Boulevard. Yeah. That hotel was shut down for human trafficking. It's yeah. Yeah. Wait, I mean, I, is it because Florida is like a uh, the vacation type place? Is that why it's such a big thing down there? Or It's easy to get in and it's easy to get out because you got to think we're a state and we're covered by water. Mm -hmm. So there are all kinds of ports that you can go and zoom off into the ocean. You don't have, you yeah, know, you don't have checkpoints sense. where you have to get out. And, you know, if you look at statistics, you're also going to see cities, big cities, small cities. Look for interstates. Where yep. you see interstates, you're going to see your higher numbers of human trafficking. Florida is a playground for monsters. And I'll just put it that way for YouTube purposes. It absolutely yeah. is. You yes. have children that are half-dressed all summer long on the beach. You got mm -hmm. weirdos running up and down the beaches. You got kids mm -hmm. that walk into 7-Eleven half-dressed. It's a normal thing down here. Right, right. It is a playground for monsters down here. And it's easy to get in and out. You snatch your kid sense. on the boat, run down the beach, get in your boat, and you're in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of the the whole water thing. That makes a lot of sense in that sense. No. Nope. Interstate and like, Florida run down the middle. Right. Good point, Zaldi. Exactly. 75 runs all the way up. 
They don't call it the sunshine the state for nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's terrifying down here. I tell you, um, about, like I guess it was about three years ago, me and my stepdaughter were in Daytona. We were walking um, to Walgreens. Matter of fact, it's just a innocent going to go to Walgreens and get some snacks from Walgreens before mm -hmm. we headed over to the beach. The place that we were walking out of had pillars. And she's a kid. So she was kind of going, you know, a little quick in front of me. And she's going in front of me and a van pulls up. The side door opens up on this van. And I ran up and I grabbed her. And she if she wasn't asleep, I'd get her. I'd turn my camera off and get her to come tell you the story. She was right. terrified. She cried for hours. That guy saw me. And he shut the door and they sped off. So you wow. never know where monsters are lurking at. That is true. That is so true. We and we had were to have side. A uh, one of our friends when we lived in Florida, we had a our, one of our friends was a border patrol agent, and he um, spent probably a good four months at my daughter's bus stop because there were some sketchy characters just hanging out when the kids got off the bus. Mm -hmm. My stepdaughter, I live on a dirt road. It's a private road. We live on a gated. We've got fences all the way around, security cameras and lights everywhere. She is taken to the bus stop every morning and picked up every afternoon. Right. She wanted to ride her bicycle to one of her friends. Her daddy got in the car and let her have the freedom of riding her bicycle as he was following her. As he was following her. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, I get that. Uh, I just watched some videos last week about the main run down through Texas um, that the State Highway Patrol in Texas spend every shift non-stop stopping people all night long on 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 all their their shifts if they see a car and nine out of ten times when they stop a car it has something to do with trafficking whether it's adult or child it's, it's still something trafficking period i mean okay. it's just incessant everywhere you know what i mean so you talking about highway 101 yes that's it yes yeah i, and I, I lived I, in houston right off okay. of highway 101 Whatever, yeah, I think that was the one because they were talking about it runs mm -hmm. straight through the whole state and they just nonstop all day long and all night long. That's all they're doing. Yep. 101 is east to west, right? Yeah, it runs yeah, across I, the street. Like so. it runs across the whole mm -hmm. state, yeah. Yeah, because um, 35 goes north and south and it's it's not any better. Yeah, and it, it's all about just awareness, you guys. If everyone is aware or at least a good amount of people are aware enough to be able to make others aware. It becomes, it, it's going to have to become daily, daily life. Okay. It, it, sadly, as sad as it is, it's going to have to become a daily thing. You know what I mean? To pay attention to everything. You can't just walk by somebody and look at a situation and go, oh no, or whatever. You can't do that anymore. Unfortunately, that, that's all I'm saying. Um, Right. That that's that's what I was watching. Those videos I was watching it was all about that, Salty. They traffic everything through Texas and into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Panhand, all of that, yes. Mm -hmm. Um and then they, there was a whole thing about the Gulf where the uh Florida Bama thing comes together and all the stuff there, and then like you were saying with the water and all that. I mean, it's it's a whole thing and it's a multi billion dollar industry guys like it's a it's a thing like what the hell these are human beings when did this happen okay where were we at when this started happening well come to find out it's been going on for a long 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 time it's just become more prominent now because of what we're sitting here doing right now it's so much easier to do this with all this people it's will like put up a... go ahead my oldest son was born in sanford in Florida many, many years ago. He's in his 20s now. And I used to joke that he had, when he was born, you know, in the knee queue, that he, we both had bracelets on. They look like, a, what is it called? House arrest bracelets. And mine and his signaled right. to each other. You know, because it used to be a thing where you had these crazy women and men that would sneak into hospitals and steal babies. And that was way back then. And I actually had an advocate that came in my room before I went into labor and explained to me, that, you know, there's the black market and there's things that happen. So we have to put this bracelet on you. And then when he's born, we're going to put his on. And you can't get out of the hospital without an alarm going off. So it's like a theft deterrent for your child. And that was, you know, 25 years ago. 
the world we live in is not the world I grew up in. I grew up in, in a little town called Paducah, Kentucky. And we left the doors open. We never locked the church that I grew up going to. Those, those, you know, my mom would leave both doors wide open with the screen doors and let air come through at night. You can't do that anymore. We're locked down at night. Once nightfall hits, it's locked down around here. And I've got 180 pounds of security dog over here that ain't having none of it. Exactly. And like, uh, I was talking about that a couple months back. Like, I remember being uh, a 10 year old kid. In the summertime when school wasn't in, the sun would come up and I would eat breakfast and out the door I would go all throughout that neighborhood. The difference then, as compared to now, was everybody in that neighborhood had my mother's phone number and vice versa mm -hmm. or knew who they were. OK. And everybody in that neighborhood knew each other's kids and where they were and who was supposed to be with them and who wasn't supposed to be with them. And they just they we watched each other. OK. If you did something wrong at somebody's house. Your parents knew about it before you got home and it was dealt with both ways. You know, I've been yelled at from my neighbors and I go home. My parents deal with it and the story and vice versa. And people care. If you see somebody with a child that, you know, in that neighborhood back then and you were like, hey, who are you? What are you doing? You don't belong here. And they dealt with it. It was done. And that stopped. That changed because everybody became. That's not my business. That's your business. That doesn't pertain to me. So I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. That's what has to stop, folks. We got to go back to the old days where we care about our neighbors and, and what's going on in their life and what's going on. I mean, to an extent, of course, but it, it, again, you can't just mind your own business anymore, period. Nope. But I, I miss those days when things were like that. It's not going to be that way. So now, as we've done with everything, we have to adapt and we have to make it right. So that's what I'm saying. And I'll go on and on and on about it until something is different, in my opinion. I'm telling you, I've been on my two-story soapbox for for years now, and I get up on it, and I had to build another level because I'll be up there, you know, just having a complete and total meltdown because it's Nothing just like you that. can't, you can't, you we've got to like you you held up your phone. I, I yell that at the mountaintops. Put your phone down and pay attention yeah. to your surroundings. Watch your yep. kids. Raise your yep. kids. Don't let PlayStation raise your kids. What I've been saying. You don't these, know who they're talking to on that game system. These you don't aren't, know who's lurking in your bushes. Exactly. These are not parents. They're not babysitters. And neither are those game systems. We need to be parents. That's what the problem is, guys. Period. My son. Sit is down and color with your kids. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say, Tomboy? My son is 32 years old and could not tell you how he gets back and forth to work every day, and I drive him. He doesn't know the route we take because he won't get off his phone. I'm like, somebody can walk up and just do whatever they want to with you because you're just looking down. Um, thank you so much, Bobby J. I appreciate that more than you know. Uh, and I do, I do, I know, and I appreciate you all very much. Um that is a big problem, you guys. That's a huge problem because, I mean, that's another part of what we were just saying. These didn't exist back then, okay? They didn't. We didn't have this. If you wanted to call somebody, wherever you were, you had to go find a phone and sit down and take the time to dial that number and then talk on the phone and be done with it. Mm -hmm. The convenience is what the problem is. The convenience of our lives, everything in our lives is at, our at, at the tip of our fingers. That's where everything fell in. That's where everything went bad. I'm sorry. I mean, these things are convenient. And we're sitting here doing what we're doing right now. That's great. And they're convenient for other things, too. They've also caused the demise of society, in my opinion. And to put us in this position. So how you many plug into your phone? know how to play kick the can? <laughs> how many guys... kids nowadays know what snipe hunting is? They don't even go outside to look for a snipe. How many kids go outside and pick up a stick and play Cowboys and Indians? Exactly. Nobody. Nobody. How many kids do you see in the backyard, in, in, the, in the back lot behind the houses on the street playing baseball together? The whole neighborhood. That doesn't happen anymore. I did that every summer. There was no team. It was the whole neighborhood. We just played together. You know what I mean? Or kickball or football or Frisbee, for God's sakes. I would spend hours playing Frisbee in the street. 
probably not a good place to do it, but I did it. Um, I tried saying, to take my dogs to go fetch their ball down in our little park area down here. Some little neighborhood kid stole his ball. The dog's ball. That's just sad. This probably that why we stay sad. inside. <laughs> And I, I told you guys, I, I some of you guys were in here, uh, the story of when my aunt died. Um, my oldest son went over with me to help clean the house out, went to the basement, got rid of some of the stuff. And there was a her old rotary phone that she used up until the last two years of her life, sitting in a box in the basement. We were moving everything out, and I laughed because she had that same phone my whole life. And he looks at this, and he goes, and this kid at that time was 23. And he was like, what, what is this? And I said, the, I mean, he knew it was a phone, but he was like, what kind of phone is this? And I said, that's a phone phone, like a landline phone. And it was an old square black Packard Bell rotary dial phone, okay? And I took it upstairs and I plugged it into the wall. And guess what, folks? It had a dial tone. And he was like, really? I said, call me real quick on my phone. He goes, what do you, what do you mean? I said, pick up the phone. He goes, well, how would it work? I said, just, you plug it in, they work, dude. That's how it works. He plugged it in and it came on. Um, which I was a little weirded out about because she didn't have a phone line, but I guess they're still active after that. But anyway, he plugs it into the phone jack and he picks it up and he's holding the phone and he goes, now what? I said, you <laughs> dial the number. So he takes his finger and he goes in between the holes for the rotary and it pushes. I said, what the hell are you doing? He goes, I'm dialing a number. I said, Joe, what the hell are you doing? You're going to tell me you don't know how to use a rotary phone. He was like, no. And I said, what the hell did I do? You know what I mean? So I showed him. I said, you have to dial each number and you take it over and let go. And he was like, are you serious? This takes too long. I was like, oh, my God. So he did it. And then it started ringing. First of all, he asked, what is that noise? I said, that's called a dial tone. Okay. He dials it. And my phone rings, and he was just totally in awe of this this damn dialing a phone. And he was like, I've seen the pay phone, so you, well, why don't you have to push the buttons? I said, this was before that, okay? It just blew my mind, you guys. I know it's a crazy story, but it was That's hilarious. Awesome. It was hilarious. He's like, this just takes too much time. And I was like, oh, my God. But see, those are memories you get to keep that are so precious yeah. to you with yeah. your children. Just as much as having to teach them how to read cursive, because they don't teach that anymore. I know. Or how to and read a clock. How to read a clock. Started. <laughs> nope. He's 17, and it took me forever to teach him how to read a clock. These are just, like, generic things that they should teach kids, I think, but they don't. So... Well, I appreciate you letting me come up. I'm honored to be on panel with you, but I'm on Eastern Standard Time and I have to work in the morning. So I'm going to say thank yeah, you to yeah. your beautiful chat. You guys know I'm usually down there with you guys and, and nice to meet you, Tom Boy. And again, Doggo, thank, keep up the good fight, man. You do amazing work over here. You know, nothing but respect for me, for you for a long time now. So thank you I for everything. That. And I'll close it out with my normal. If you see something, say something. Never give up. That's it right. It takes a village to raise a child, and we're stronger together. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll have to do this again. I, you're welcome here anytime you want. Thank you have so a much. Good night. And <laughs> that is that link again we threw out there um, for that channel, Mind of Monsters, guys. Check that link out if you can. Subscribe to the channel. Um, I can tell you, you're not going to be disappointed. I'll be checking out a lot more of it. Um, it, it's, it's what we need guys. It's exactly what we need. So very much. Wow. We've been here three hours. See, these conversations are conversations we should have more often. Uh, and I'm going to be trying to set this up so we can do this more often. There's the link again. Thank you, doodle. Um, and thank you for anybody that donated, uh, to that, those links by any means. I appreciate that. It's never, ever expected folks, but beyond appreciated. Uh, it definitely helps. Um, Tomboy, I appreciate you very much too, as well. I always love having you guys up here. I love hearing your thoughts and feelings about everything. I didn't get to get to everything I wanted to tonight, but this was worth the conversation. Very, very much worth it. Uh, Gray, always a pleasure to have you up here. Always welcome. Uh, Doc, Draw Latina, thank you so very much for joining us tonight as well. 
uh clue always the play i mean it, just all of you guys i really do appreciate you so very much i appreciate all the input the insight and the info that we talk about on a regular basis and the things that we're talking about tonight need to be talked about uh a lot more often and and like i said i think we're going to start having certain shows about certain things um a little more often now i can link up with certain people and bring them in to express different things for you guys and awareness is the most important thing on the planet, folks. Um, uh, Terry said, do you realize that Ohio is the home to so many? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So very much, Terry. It's a scary thing. Very scary thing. I live um, within 20 minutes of where Jeffrey Dahmer was born. I'll just put it that way. So, yes, I do know that. Um, and lived for up till high school. Um so guys, again, I want to tell you all. Uh oh, whose birthday? Whose birthday? Whose birthday? Uh uh huh. <coughs> well, Miss Deborah, did we talk about that already, or did you slide through that, Deborah? Mine is the day after tomorrow. Remember that, Doodle, <laughs> because I won't. <laughs> did you slide through that, Deborah? <coughs> You did, didn't you? No, it's never a rant. It it all is very important, monsters. I appreciate I appreciate that very much. Make sure you're here tomorrow, uh, Deborah, if you will, please. I appreciate that. Every one of you guys out here, I appreciate you so very much um, for supporting this channel, for being here, for supporting everything that we talk about. For supporting the the Sebastian Rogers case, we have to bring this child home um, in, in every sense at this point. Now that we know a little bit more about him and then a little bit more about why and what we didn't know about him, I think that is important as well. So again, thank you all so very much for being here with us tonight. Uh, guys, do me a favor and please please don't forget to love yourselves to love each other and don't change anything about yourselves because you guys are the beautiful people you are amazing and you make this channel what it is i come here for you not for me i love every one of you guys and oh, i will <laughs> and i will see you all <laughs> so very soon everyone have a wonderful rest of your night good night and god bless folks bye-bye now Mm-hmm. <laughs>